Good morning, everyone. My name is Danka Metcalf. Welcome to uh, live trading. Today is September 12th, uh, 2019, 9 a.m. Eastern. So thank you so much for signing up for the live trading with me today. We will be focusing on trading the futures, uh, mostly the futures indices. We will also keep an eye on gold and oil. And also if any swing stock swing trades um, will come up on my scanner, we will be looking to uh, add some of these names to our list and also uh, call some trades into, uh, <clears throat> into some future stocks. Now, I'm sorry, into, uh, into uh, swing stocks and also swing futures but we're going to take a look at the markets and uh, we'll see so uh guys can you please give me a quick sound check i just want to make sure that everybody can hear me and everything is uh going good thank you so much and uh also um if you can please where you're typing select all panelists and attendees so everybody can see um what you guys are typing uh, excuse me, what you guys are typing as well. <clears throat> so I'm sorry about today. I'm just losing my voice a little bit. <clears throat> Hope it's going to get better. I have a cup of tea here. <laughs> All right. So let me remind you that this session is being recorded. Uh, the recording will be sent out to you later today. Uh, if you guys have not received day one or day two recordings, please check your spam folder. Or, or if you have not received it, even of a spam folder, uh, even checking the spam folder, remember to check uh, and see, um, uh, you know what, just, just shoot me an email. You probably have unsubscribed, you previously have unsubscribed and that's why we're, uh, you're not getting the communication. So just shoot me an email and I'll, uh, I'll get you the recording back, uh, uh, back to you. All right. So my gosh, like so many traders in here today, we have actually a super full house. We're over 600 people in the room right now. <clears throat> Can you please type uh, where you guys are from? Some of you have already typed uh, Canada, Bay Area, Texas, <clears throat> Michigan, Cleveland, New York, Alva, Florida, Herb, <laughs> Chicago, Arizona, Columbia, South America. Wow. Awesome. Colorado, Connecticut, Las Vegas, Tampa, Helmand. Hey, awesome. Love that place. Been there. Netherlands, Spain, Toledo. I'm in, uh, I'm in Detroit, Michigan right now. Uh, I have two offices, one in Detroit, Michigan. I'm actually 26 mile, uh, 26 mile north of uh, Detroit towards Lake Huron. Uh, I'm on the east side. And uh, we also have an office in Boca Raton, Florida. So Toledo, not that far. We're about an hour away. Canada, A, that's awesome. <laughs> I do have family in Canada. Uh, London, UK. I have family in London, UK. My nephew is there and also nephew, another nephew uh, used to work uh, for, um, for a hedge fund there. All right. Salzburg, been there. Hey, Jane, welcome. All right. Phoenix. All right. So thanks so much, guys. Minnesota, Anna. All right, guys. So thank you so much for joining the open house. I really appreciate you guys being here. Uh, thank you so much for your interest in day one and day two. That was a little bit of prep to get into trading. So I really appreciate your attendance. So let's get started today. Um, first off, let me remind you that all information provided is for educational purpose only and should not be construed as investment advice regarding the purchase or sale of securities, options, futures, forex, or any other instrument of any kind. Uh, Trade Out Loud LLC company is not an investment advisory service, registered investment advisor, or broker dealer. And we do not recommend or suggest uh, which securities or currencies you should buy or sell. I'm pretty sure you know by now that trading involves a really high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors, and you could lose money. 
before deciding to trade. You should carefully consider your objectives, your level of experience, and risk appetite. Individual performance depends upon each person's skills time commitment, and definitely it's the effort you put into it. Results may not be typical and individual results will vary as such. So you must do your own research and make your own trading decisions. What I truly recommend uh, to traders that uh, are trading with me for the very first time, and this is also valid for the trading room, uh, I recommend them to watch me for a day or two or three or even a week before they actually start taking trades to get used to my style of trading, to get used to the way I call the trades and uh, to get used to definitely to the market, um, uh, how, to the market conditions and the way I trade certain market conditions at a, uh, at a time. All right, so thank you so much for being here, guys. And this is going to be the screen that I'm sharing. Uh, please type a one in the room. Um, um, good question, David. I will get to you back to you on that, and I will explain everything that you guys see here. So I just want to make sure that you guys see six charts right now. That's perfect because I'm not seeing the projector active. So <laughs> thanks for the heads up. Uh, today, uh, as always, and this is going to be a carbon copy of what I do every single day in the trading room. Uh, we usually open the room at nine o'clock and then I do the chart work and I get back in the mic around 9.15 or 9.20 or depending on market environment around 9.30. Uh, but we do the pre-market game planning. Uh, I do post uh, all the economic releases. I do post uh, all the events that uh, we should be aware of uh, ahead of the trading day. So. Uh, I did post it in the room earlier this morning, uh, prior to nine o'clock. We do did have the ECB. Uh, uh, we we did have the ECB that uh, cut its deposit rate and um, launch a new bond buying program. And the central bank's quantitative easing program uh, will entail a twenty billion euro per month of asset purchase for as long as it is deem, deems as long as it deems necessary uh the press conference already started at uh at 8 30 we have seen some reactions in the market i have commented yesterday in the trading room about a possible violent reaction in gold whether to the upside or to the downside because for the last two trading sessions it was uh ranging and it was very much range bound so we will talk in detail about the analysis in gold and uh oil and all the indices uh the uh, the earnings are winding down we don't have any significant companies that will be reporting today and that's pretty much it on the economic front all right um I don't listen to news when I'm trading. I'm actually uh, I'm actually um, asking my traders uh, if there was an announcement, if there was anything of any kind. If I see some volatility that spikes, I like to focus 100% on price action, and the price is going to tell me where the uh, where it wants to go and what it wants to do. Um, I do. Uh, I am subscribed to. Um, uh, to a new service. I'm subscribed to Benzinga Pro and if there are any special announcements, I do have them. Uh, I do have them on my platform and I share it with the room. Uh, but in that, you know, in that's pretty much it. So I'm not listening to any music. I'm not, uh, I'm not listening to TVs. We're not going to talk about ice cream here, or we're not going to talk about any ball games or any sports. So it's only a hundred percent trading. And, uh, uh, I, I like to focus on trading. So, um, I like to, 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 to like, if we, you know, uh, we could set some time aside if you guys want to talk about something else. But anyways, at the end of this, this uh, session today is structured into two parts. First off, the most active part where I'm really focused in day trading futures. And that is from 9.30 till about 11.30 o'clock. And then we wrap up around 12 o'clock. I do a wrap, wrap, wrap 
the market uh, with the key points and elements and what we can expect for the PM session. We take a break from 12 o'clock to two o'clock and then we come back into the market at two o'clock and two o'clock is dedicated more into a bit higher time frames, but also into the futures day trades if they should be on a continuation pattern or breakout or breakdown pattern. So we're going to be looking a little bit higher time frames than you can see. Uh, then you will see this morning. So uh, 15 minute is just uh, uh, is just going to be here just as we're getting closer to the open. But at the open, we're going to go to a smaller time frame and we're going to be focusing on some very active trades, just sniper style. We take it, we shoot it and we are going to try to uh, we're trying to try to exit it uh, as uh, as by by trailing, obviously. All right, and if you should have any other uh, questions, uh, please feel free to ask any sort of question, but after we're outside of this two hour frame. So now we're just getting started. Uh, I'm gonna start with a pre-market game plan in one minute or so, and I'm not gonna be taking any questions until we get uh, uh, past 11.30 or 12 o'clock because I need to focus on uh, I need to focus on some trades and some price and action activity. If the market should be dormant and is not going to be doing anything, then we can take questions along the way. Um, I do not use the VWAP indicator. I have uh, I have used it a long time ago. I have no interest in it. Price action is telling me exactly. So every trader is different. If you think that the VWAP is helping you, that's fantastic. You could uh, you could actually uh, uh, use it. It's fine. Uh, it's just what works for you and what makes you money. And this is what trading is about. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Julio, uh, the, uh, the, the entire session will be recorded and uh, it will be available to you uh, this afternoon, actually late afternoon. All right, so uh, to start off the day, I'm going to switch these time frames to the two minute charts. Okay, you can see that they were. Uh, on the 15 minute from last night. So we're gonna switch to aggressive time frames, and these are the two minutes. And I know I had a question uh, in the room, why, why do I watch gold and oil on the one hour, uh, on a higher time frame? Well, it's because I don't really like to micromanage these two trades, and I'm looking only for swing or active swing opportunities to uh, try to capture trades in them, whether on breakout breakdowns, like I said, major strategies, pullback buys, pullback sells, uh, uh, into confluence areas, and I need to watch these higher time frames for higher targets. Uh, keep in mind that all of the trades that I call can be executed via uh, full contract futures or mini micro futures along with golden oil. Remember that uh, uh, oil already has a mini contract available to you. It's QM uh, and it is half the size, about half the size of the full size contract. Uh, also gold, you can use a mini or you can use a micro. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna begin today. Uh, and here we go. We're gonna start with the Imini Dow. But wait a minute, first off, let's take a quick look. Okay, got a little bit ahead of myself here. Uh, let's take a look at the overall market conditions uh, and then we're gonna observe the structure. So market conditions to start off the day. The Dow is up 74 points, the S&P eight and a half points, NASDAQ, uh, 75 points, uh, I'm sorry, a NASDAQ, uh, 51.75. Uh, 51 Russell is up about a point, so very uh, uh, flat uh, for the day. Uh, we're having a little bit of relative strength in the NASDAQ stocks. Now, remember, as we're getting closer to the end of September, NASDAQ, uh, NASDAQ, uh, NASDAQ stocks and NASDAQ uh, uh, index is more likely uh, to rally faster than the mini S&P and Dow. So that is for the last two weeks of uh, two weeks of September. We're also going to wrap up uh, wrap up September. It's going to be like I said, a very tough month. We already had a pretty 
uh, sideways uh, uh, <clears throat> week until uh, yesterday, until we broke out. Uh, but we have been ranging for Thursday, Friday last week, and then Monday, Tuesday, la uh, yesterday, we had a little bit of rally and uh, actually a really nice rally because we booked profits in. We had a swing long in the Yemeni Dow and we closed the trade ahead of the uh, ahead of the ECB announcement because I do not trade any kind of economic releases. I have no interest in trading any kind of economic releases. Uh, and uh, today is, uh, because today is Thursday, we also have, uh, the, the, uh, we, we also have natural gas inventories at 1030. So just want to give you a heads up on that. And throughout the trading session today, uh, we will be looking at some other commodities such as copper that is trying to push higher and it has and it had a uh, nice bullish uh, price action activity. I just saw the alerts uh, that were popping on my phone earlier this morning, and then I looked at the chart. All right, so let's get started. Uh, it is 9.15 right now, and let's get started with a market analysis. And we're going to be starting with a top-down analysis, as always. Uh, so uh, I always start with a monthly analysis, even though I'm trading a one-minute chart, because this keeps me on the right side of the trade and also enables me to uh, to see any other swing trading opportunities that may be forming at a higher price tar at a higher price level uh, as you could see we had a pretty impressive month and uh, into yesterday's trading session close to yesterday's trading session we have just executed a, rever a, a reversal from this prior monthly bar. So we have just taken out last month's price action activity. And remember, last month was a doozy because it took the price to revisit on the monthly scale all the way into the 20 SMA and then it zipped back up. And right now we are erasing, we're, we actually have erased the, plot, uh, the prior cluster high from last October. Remember the October high and then the big shebang to the downside and then the high from January and then the, the inception of volatility that took the price higher. Uh, and the reality is that all we had was a massive rally. And from this massive rally that we had, remember the Dow broke 18,000 level. Uh, and then after breaking 18,000 level, it was on a rampage. It never stopped until it reached 26, almost 700. So it was a quite an impressive move. The market needs time to digest these kinds of price action activities. It was very extended from uh, any kind of dynamic support level at that point in time. So that created a lot of volatility. There were machines, there were algorithms that were going haywire, going, uh, going long, going short. And that's what started this whole volatility process. In the reality hindsight, uh, when you're looking at it, uh, you can see that it was nothing else as dramatic as it was the uh, February and March uh, pullbacks into last year, 2018, and uh, 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 into um, um, uh, October, November, and December of uh, also of last year. This was nothing else but a range, so a very sloppy range. And you can see that's pretty much like a bull flag, or if you want to break out, whatever you want to call these patterns, it's definitely a breakout. So when the price is taking out the highs of a cluster, it's a breakout, right? Okay, so uh, 27,000 was the big barrier to break to the upside. Right now, the price rose well above 27,300, and now it has pulled back to the 27,200, and this is where the price is residing now. The pattern is very bullish on the monthly chart, which means that it's going to create a lot of bullishness effect uh, for, uh, for smaller time frames. Zooming in on the weekly chart, you can see that we're trying to take out this prior pivot high from 27,400 approximate area, 397. So 27,400 is going to be our next area of resistance. So that means that price may have velocity all the way into that 400 zone. Uh, and definitely erase the first shelf of resistance into the 27K. Now 27K is going to represent our new support zone. So that is going to be very good news for us because we have a stable support zone, which is not that far away. It's only 200 points underneath it. Uh, the daily chart, again, it's running into these uh, clusters. First resistance, 27, then we have 27,100, and now we're trading into this cluster. The more we advance and progress faster, higher, erasing this cluster high, we're going to start entering into projections. If we have enough time today, 
uh, we will be doing some projections. If not, we're going to be doing them, obviously, uh, as we're getting closer to this breakout area because we still have about 200 point juice into this move. All right, let's take it to the homework chart. And this is the hourly chart. This is the key level uh, uh, for today's trading session, the 27,148. Uh, we have another level of support of 27,050. And we have a last, uh, uh, last level. And this is the last resort for bullish price action activity into the 950. If the price should pull back to any of these levels, these are going to be seen uh, as buying opportunities. So far, we're trying to get a rotation going on here from this new support level that is, I would say, somewhat of an area of confluence because we do have the 20 simple moving average there. I would like to see it on the four hour chart. All right, here's the plan for today, which is shaping up over 250. This is going to be a buy. We're getting our first alert set off. So 250 is gonna be a buy. And uh, let's check out the risk for this trade. Probably it's gonna be around the 220 level, uh, 220 level or 200 level. So it's probably gonna have around 30 to 50 points stop or risk at this point. So we're, if the price is gonna accelerate over 250, we're gonna be looking for an ascension higher back into the 300, 320 and 350. And these are going to be the target levels. Uh, when the market opens, I will be on the mic to announce all these trades. All right, so the, for us, the Mini &E Dow has been front and center for the last three trading weeks. And prior to that, we have been playing a lot, the Mini uh, &E S&P and a little bit of NASDAQ. NASDAQ a little bit stinky, I would say, because it has been ranging for uh, and lagging for a little bit. Uh, anyway, so let's get uh, to the M&E &E S&P. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it to the monthly chart to show you that it had, uh, it had reversed on the monthly. It took out the prior month high, which means that it's entering into a dynamic momentum uh, potentially for the uh, new high, the old, the old high that we had into the 3029 zone. The weekly chart approaching resistance. Resistance is going to create and reverberate a little bit of uh of price action so price action is going to become a little bit jittery from that 30 level 30 30 level to about 30 10 level so uh again this is the, the uh, this index does not have a lot of uh, a, a lot of room so it really needs to push and go full throttle into the 29 in order to start entering some uh really good um uh enter into some dynamics uh, continu con dynamic continuation to the upside uh, the hourly chart, again, uh, the new support level is 3,000. So again, this is going to be seen as the, the new level of support and also the stop for your potential upcoming trades. There is a next level of support, huge confluence zone at 29.90. You can see it here is 29.92. It's actually a cluster between 29.90 and 29.95. So this is going to be huge support. If we're going to get the price pulled back to this area, this is going to be an aggressive buy. Uh, off of these zones. All right, let's check out the four hour chart. The four hour chart is going to be a probably a very strong signal to buy. Uh, if it trades over uh, 30, 13, 30, 13 is going to be the signal for buy higher. All right, and the risk for this trade is going to be so far pre market is going to be into the 3000 because you're going to have that big. Uh, movement that uh, happens uh, and the big fleecing effect that happens at the market open. Uh, I will be looking also for a tighter risk going into the 305 zone. Remember all these indices because we did have the ECB, we did have news. Uh, the, uh, the news that we had created this volatility and that's why the risk levels are going to be elevated for the trading session today. So you have to price them in. NASDAQ. So for NASDAQ, I'm gonna go very quickly here to the monthly chart. Uh, the monthly chart you can see, not quite yet triggered uh, Triggered um, a reversal. Uh, it has been lagging a little bit, although the momentum uh, is uh, uh, a little bit stronger for NASDAQ right now. Uh, new um, uh, old time high for NASDAQ is 8051.75. Uh, and we also have a uh, last month's high into the 8014. So if any time uh, during the trading session today or even tomorrow, if you're trading tomorrow on your own, uh, you're going to see a break over 8015. This is going to be big push to the upside and it's going to provide you 
uh, with a very nice tradable void all the way into the 80.50. All right, so from the weekly chart, you can see that we're still trading into resistance from this cluster high right here. So any high, any all-time highs creating that damp on price. So it's gonna try to try to push the price a little bit lower and becomes very, very whippy. In fact, we're gonna go to smaller time frames very soon and you are going to see the price action on the five minute and two minute is full of whips, which means that you don't wanna trade in a wicky environment. You want full candles, full body candles, uh, even if they have wicks, but you, you're looking for the smaller wicks. Uh, the big wicks on the candles is, the is an indication that there are algos, tons of algos that are scheduled for that a price zone to trigger uh, to initiate trades or to take profits on the trades for very small stops. There are different kind of algos. We don't have time to get into this today, but anyways, I will alert you along the way if I see any algo prone action. All right, the daily chart, uh, it still has a tradable void, like I said, all the way into the 80.50. Uh, it has snapped up. This is actually a strong resistance area into the 79.35 to 79.40. Let's take it down to uh, the hourly chart, and the hourly chart has support into the 7900 zone, secondary support into the 7850 area. If the price is going to become aggressive and pull in into the 79, 7900 and 7850 are going to be seen as areas of buying opportunities. All right, let's uh, zoom in a little bit uh, further into the four hour chart. The four hour chart trigger at this point is going to be uh 79 48 25 so we're going to be looking for a trade over 70 uh 79 49 let's just create this alert right here 79 49 okay let's put it right here that's going to be the trigger for a higher the pre-market support is going to be all the way considered into the 78 uh, 7894. And uh, remember, as these triggers are happening, we're going to be waiting for what? We're going to be waiting for price action to see if it's triggering. And we don't want to be the guinea pigs that are going to be, we don't want to be the first traders that are taking the trigger. We want to see how the, the price action reaction around that area. And then we want to wait for a pullback, right? especially after news announcement. Uh, the risk for this trade, like I said, we're gonna be considering the 94 area, but uh, at the time of the trade, depending on the, uh, on the two minute time frame, we're gonna try to zoom in on a much uh, a smaller scale. Perhaps we're gonna be looking at a stop into the 79.23. Once again, I do not establish the risk levels. You guys can, you guys can position size according to it. And I'm telling you what is likely to keep you in the trade a little bit longer. All right, let's take out. Uh, let's take it to Russell. Russell is uh, on a quick recoup mission. All right, uh, because it was the uh, the laggard. It was the lagging indicator. So let's zoom it out to the monthly chart. Monthly chart is getting ready for uh, for a reversal. That's going to be a really huge deal at the fifteen ninety and fifteen ninety one. So I'm going to set an alert for myself here. Uh, because this is going to go probably full throttle for, for higher. We have been waiting for the setup for a very long time, and that is since February. And we have been trying to capture a swing long in RTY in this uh, in this area uh, into the 1600, but we just had a peak of high. We actually had a trade in Russell as a swing, but we locked it in very early in the game because we had this, uh, we had this reversal come. So we kind of broke even on the trade uh, at that point. So we trigger higher, like I said, we were uh, into the 1600, we carried a little bit higher. Uh, and I, th I think we actually trailed out with a little bit of money on this trade, I have to check the portfolio. All right, from the weekly perspective, uh, we're reaching a lot of resistance at this point, but if we're gonna break above this resistance, we have room to 1650, 1700, and back into the 1745 and 1750. The daily chart, uh, again, into resistance, and which brings us back to the hourly chart. Our hourly chart still not determined yet. I think that if it trades over 81, this is going to be the trigger for higher. Let me just zoom in on the four hour. Uh, yes, this is gonna be the trigger for higher, in fact, 82. So I'm gonna set my alert for the 82 area. All right, so uh, if, we're getting, if we're getting the price ascent back into the, uh, back into the 82 area, this can be seen as a buy signal. And um, for the stop, uh, for the stop 75, as long as it's uh, at the, if at the time of the trigger, this is going to be the new, uh, the new low into 75, this can be considered as a stop. But other than that, I think it should pull back a little bit more into the 50s because it does, does have a bubble out there right there. 
Let's take it to gold. Gold, very messy. I'm not, I've been trading. I've been, we have been actually uh, uh, in and out, in and out gold. Uh, remember, if you're uh, deciding to trade gold or oil, remember, oil is very whippy. You have to be really good at trading oil because I know more traders that are losing money in oil than making money in oil. There are very few traders that are making money in oil because you have to trade higher time frames, And that's one of the reasons why I look at these higher time frames. You're just going to get whipped around constantly if you're looking at really, really small time frames. So what happened in gold, you can see the levels that we have right here. They are in full swing. This is the new level of support into the 1513. If, if you see a pullback back into the 1513 or 1510, this can be a buying opportunity. This is not a buy or a sell into this area as long as it's trading into the 30s and into the 31s. All right, the market is open. One more CL, and we're going to be looking at these at four hour, uh, four hour, uh, four hour charts. Okay, for the analysis. Um, and the reality is that uh, to me, oh, I'm going to take this zoom, zoom it out a little bit on the daily. Okay, this is a sideways range. I have absolutely no interest in trading this. Um, the weekly chart is extremely messy at this point. It's trading within this prior candle high. It, it actually initiated, uh, it, and we were looking last week uh, in uh, oil for a breakout over $58. And uh, I mentioned in the trading room that I'm really looking to buy the $58. However, I need to see some proof in the pudding. Uh, I didn't see that. So therefore, uh, because the risk level was so elevated, I decided to not take the trade. Uh, so, um, I did amazingly because I wanted to take it long at 58. I waited to see how it behaves into this area and it didn't really behave that well because it came full throttle back down and it's probably going to want to retest the $53 area again. And this is uh, the 200 SMA onto the weekly chart, daily chart, very messy. I don't see anything to trade, uh, right here, the, just absolutely nothing to trade possibly. And you can see that it was fighting so hard to get above all of this cluster of moving averages. Look at this web of moving averages that I have here. So the price tried so hard, initiated higher and then full throttle back to the downside. So this doji was a pretty good indication resistance right here that uh, oil is not ready to ascend higher. All right. So uh, we're going to start our watch process. And uh, so far you can see the two minute, uh, two minute charts are pretty much range bound. Um, see here. Soybeans higher. I typically don't really go into <clears throat> commodities, but we talked about uh, we talked about soybeans, and I did have an alert in soybeans. <clears throat> See, soybeans is getting ready to um, to push higher here. It's still gonna going to be on my watch. All right, we're getting a little bit more positive price action from NASDAQ. If you were getting divergency as well, so I'm not taking any longs, any shorts at this point. Even though NASDAQ has trigger, you can see here that it has triggered the long. We're getting some uh, divergency, Russell down, NASDAQ up, S&P up, still not triggered and flat Dow. And by the way, the levels are here on the chart. You can see them, but the chart is uh, on auto. So as it approaches, uh, as it will, as it will approach the levels, you will actually see the levels. S&P, Trigger. I don't want to give that much room to these uh, to these trades. 
Uh, the trigger actually came at seven o'clock into NASDAQ. So that's one of the reasons why I'm kind of waiting to see if it, uh, if it breaks out and then sucks everybody in and then it put, pulls them back down with, uh, with Russell. But I want to show you something very quickly here. So uh, lately, the overnight price action has been really nice and very generous for the London session traders. So this is the, this is the trigger that came here at 79.20 with a risk of 7,900. Uh, and it came at seven o'clock in the morning. All right, a little bit of more ascension into the mini S&P. Why I'm lagging. I would like, and I like more of the YM today than anything else, just because uh, NASDAQ is into too much resistance at that point. Uh, the S&P is into resistance at 3014 and 3016. So it may accelerate into that point and then it may want to pull back. So what the, the the reality is that when when we're having these levels, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> when we're having these levels that you see here on the charts, you want to take the trade as close as possible to the support zones. You don't want to take the trade as it expands to the upside because you're cutting your really nice profit. You're cutting into your nice profit. You're going to have huge risk and really tiny profit. Okay, so you, you want to take it as close as possible to these lines, all right, or uh, above these, uh, above these uh, alerts that I have here. All right, I'm going to take it back down to the two minute. Russell no, still not settled. I got to check out on Russell and see again. See, like I said before, Russell uh, still wants to pull back a little bit, and I, um, uh, I, th I think it really wants to pull back to. Let me just tell you the exact figure that I'm watching. Seventy to sixty-eight. Seventy to let's say sixty-eight or sixty-seven. So it wants to pull back into that area. It likes to pull back into uh, into that 70s, uh, 10 EMA on the four hour. Uh, by the way, I only take one to two, maybe three trades a day. So I wait for, I'm in sniper mode until I see that my trade lines up perfectly with my risk and with everything else. Uh, Russell trying to re reverse on the one and the two minute. Gonna walk you through step by step what I watch in the market. All right, see what I mean about NASDAQ punch through resistance and now it's coming in. Very fleecy, very fleecy price action. And this is very typical for, uh, uh, for this kind of day where we had the ECB announcement. It was also the last day of Draghi. Uh, at the helm of uh, the ECB. So there is more quantitative easing for Europe. Uh, the Euro is actually uh, uh, really heavy this morning and uh, the next support level, I, uh, the next support level is actually quite far away. So it may, uh, it may pull back a little bit more. It, it actually may come in a little bit more, not pull back, but it may come in a little bit more. You can see that gold from the hourly, uh, it tapped onto, now remember we have had these levels uh, pre-market. These are pre-market levels that we watch. These are high confluence zones where the price action and algos are uh, more likely and prone to hitting. And uh, you could see right here that it came into that 1530.6. Uh, 1530 uh, we had the level and it went to 1532, okay, point two. So very accurate. We also have the 200 SMA here, prior resistance, and we're expecting the price to pull back uh, into the 1513. For those of you that are watching smaller time frames, we will be watching possibly in gold, uh, some kind, uh, some kind of formation. Let me check uh, the four hour in oil here.
It has trading below, uh, it's trading below support here. So uh, in, uh, in oil, the trigger came at one o'clock. So once again, uh, the overnight trading session had the upper hand into the best cleanest move for this index. All right, the S&P, I like the price action in a mini S&P. S&P is uh, pretty much uh, uh, very solid right now, uh, holding um, the best not coming in along with NASDAQ. Uh, we're seeing, remember I said that Russell is has support into the 70s and all the way, let's say, into the 68, 67 zone, and that's the area where it should react. Gold is entering, uh, very, gold is actually close to triggering a one hour sell, which is going to probably push the price lower to 1515. The S&P is holding really, really tight here. There is resistance at 3013 and 3014 in the S&P. Uh, if it trades over 30, 14, for me, it really needs to clear, uh, to clear this area. So 30, 14, to me, it really needs to clear 30, 14 and has room to run to 30, 18 and 30, 20. So I'm going to type it out here. <clears throat> the risk that we will evaluate, obviously, the risk and readjust the risk at the time of the trigger. But right now, it looks like 30 below 3006. So I'm going to put uh, 3005 for the risk. Uh, targets 3018, like I said, 3020. Thirty twenty four. The market is still calibrating, you guys. So just wait. This is just the first ten minutes. This is just the first ten minutes. The other indices are not ready yet. <laughs> Dale, one of us will make money. Yeah, that is the trade for now. S&P long 30.15. 30, uh, currently 30.07 looks to hold. The stops are a little bit wide because <clears throat> of that ECB announcement that created just a bit more volatility than we want to see here in the market. We like volatility, but we don't like this, uh, these big gyrations. So pretty much we have a very range bound market. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit to cut some of the noise to the five minute. Yikes, this is the 745 announcement, okay? Okay, so I will be typing in the room with caps. So you guys can differentiate what I'm typing from what, every, uh, from what everyone else is typing. 
Uh, NASDAQ is still, uh, still has support into the 79.24. As long as 79.24 is holding, I'm not going to be looking for uh, any kind of shorts. Uh, 30.06, 30.07 level is being tested. Um, into uh, the m and &E SMP. Uh, the price currently trading below the 20 and the 10 EMA has entered right now a reversal. Still has support from the overnight price action at 3004. 3004, 3005. Remember, there's a very small gap. The price uh, the price from uh, the uh, overnight trading session. Uh, gap up support is 3007. And uh, the next support is 3002. So from this point, it's either price is going to want to fill the gap and it's going to want to rotate back up. So to me, it really needs to clear, uh, clear this chop, okay? I want it to clear the chop. I'm not interested at this point or a long or short at this. I am neutral at this point. Remember, I'm looking for high, uh, uh, for higher um, velocity moves and I'm not interested in booking one point or three points or anything like that. So I'm, if I'm trading the mini S&P, I want to see it pop. 7, 10, 12, 20 points and along in YM, obviously I'm going for over 50 points in NASDAQ, the same, um, looking for more than 20 points. So I'm not into the scalping mode. So I'm not, uh, I'm not a, uh, w there are scalping opportunities and sometimes we do some scalper rooties in the trading room, but I don't like to play with, uh, with the volatility. I want to go on onto the safer, I'm playing the safer side of the trade and I'm keeping my traders on the safer side of the trade. The m and &E S&P is back into the support level that I mentioned earlier. Russell coming in a bit more, testing that 68, 67 area that we have discussed as being strong support zone. Uh, the Dow is right trading into uh, right trading into support. Oops, have a wrong chart here. Let me just go to the default. Uh, this is the support into the 150, just uh, trading into that support zone. So I'm walking you through my thought process of what I'm thinking and seeing at every level of the way. Just want to check the fix real quick. No, nothing significant. Uh, yeah, Herb, thanks so much for that. <clears throat> but I'm, I'm still watching this area because it may still want to go back up. NASDAQ is into support, Dow into support right now, and we have the mini S&P into support. Just want to share my screen with you guys. So this is what I'm watching. Remember, we're bullish over 3015, 
and into the 3000 we're going to be looking to see if the price stabilizes to take the price back up into the 315 if not we can have a little let's say i don't know if this is going to be a great opportunity to short here because this is such a big uptrend There's uh see this is this is the 3000 area this 3000 needs to hold the first shelf of support was into uh the first shelf of support was into the 3005 All right, going to switch to 5 minute right now. Because they are into support. Let's see if we're getting the reversals or continuations at this point. Still very early. Remember, we have 10 minutes to the top of the hour. 10 o'clock is the big, uh, biggest reversal time that happens in the market. And usually you're getting a fade of the current move that you have right now going on. Uh, we're getting some pullbacks uh, into some stocks as well. Um, one stock that we are in Verizon is just making a new high and just heading for a massive, massive breakout. Still have not taken anything on it, any profit yet. Financials are holding. Um, XLF, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, Inside Day. Gonna switch to the five minute and Russell. Since we are on support, we're gonna be looking for five minute rotations going from this support zone. We have a brand new candle, 950. So far the parameters, so please cancel the prior trade. Cancel the SMP trade. We will issue some other trades. We have filled the gaps from the overnight trading session. And by the way, we did have some news that came in, right? We have uh, President Trump tweeted something it was around 7 p.m. Eastern, and that's where the market shoot, uh, sh uh, shot up. All right, we're looking for the M and the SMP for a rotation 3007. by 3000 tp target into the high 3010 plus high of the day if this pattern is going to fail and if it's not going to respond we're going to switch to some other time frame and it means that the price is not ready to rotate for higher and it's still gonna stall and push lower. There, this was quite a bit of a volatile move. The volume for today, very subsided, very low in all the indices. NASDAQ has not filled the gap. NASDAQ needs to uh, needs about 7,900 and 7,890 to, to fill the gap so it's a little bit stronger in structure than m and &E SMP. Uh, 30, 79.37.5 can be a long in NASDAQ. 7907 for the stop. 
uh, target into the high, the day, the rest by trailing. Obviously, I'm going to be on the mic. I'm going to be doing all that. YM can be a buy over 27, 164, 165. And let's see if these are, these are the first parameters, okay, of the trade still very early on on the move. We're getting ready for reversal time in about six minutes. 27, 165, we want to be ready. Uh, the stop is going to be 27,100. Stops will be adjusted at the time of the trigger, of the trigger. Uh, targets in uh, YM, 27,200. 27 to 20. Uh, plus high the day, plus if it will be a trend day, We'll get to that. No trades in gold, no trades in oil, no trades in Russell. All right, new parameters. We're having new parameters. Cancel everything above. We're gonna get new parameters, guys. We gotta ask fast. So there may be triggers every five minutes from now going into 10.30. Uh, we're still trading the September contract. Great question, Josh. We're still trading the September contract. Okay, YM, 140. So cancel above. I'm trying to type in with one hand. It's really hard. Cancel above. YM long. YM long, guys. 140. 140 YM long. by 100 same same targets a mini smp yes herb all of us all right the mini smp we want to take it over uh three 30.05, 30.05, 30.05 is gonna have the trigger. The stop is gonna be below this low right here. We're trying to set up some low, 3,000. Same TP. I'm gonna leave NASDAQ out of it. We don't have time for NASDAQ. NASDAQ, NASDAQ is, has too much pressure. The trigger in S&P is 30.05. Herb? on it oh my god where's my active trader oh my god i was typing in i'm not ready for my active trader <laughs> okay there we go have my order in these are going to be hard stops hard stops YM still has room to come back into the 27060. So we don't know if this rotation is going to do the trick or if it's really going to want to uh, pull back even further. The SMP has triggered. Greg, no trade in Russell, no trade in NASDAQ. Remember, if you're if you guys are new, just don't load up on S and P and Y M uh, on all the trades that I post. Just select one of them, or I don't know if you like. You know, you can actually take all, but it depends on your risk tolerance and your ability to follow. So remember, you have to have two domes, two active screens, if you want to manage them, right? Okay, so the Dow needs to trigger the 40s and it really needs to break through the 50 in order to start accelerating higher. Let's see if 
this is gonna do the trick and it's gonna come into we have we are okay we triggered also in ym you probably heard my platform um and uh we're getting we have we are one minute into reversal time thank you herb thank you so much by the way guys we do have an auto trading program herb uh, is our broker herb if you can type in to so everybody can see he's executing uh, the trades that we call in the trading room and if you're too busy to take your trades we can take your trades I mean herb can take your trades for you so if you would like more information about that we will provide you with more information okay uh, over 50 we will look to lock in uh, over 50, we will look to raise our stops to some break-even areas, okay? So uh, we still, we came into that 50, but it's still, it's still gyrating. See this, uh, uh, this resistance here is acting as a lid for price. So the price really needs to, the price needs to punch through that in order to, uh, regain a little bit of confidence and try rising into the 80s. So we're going to be looking for a next target into the 27 and 180 in the Dow. Let's see if this is going to be the 10 a.m. low. If this is going to be actually the low of the day here, this is very important. If it's going to be taken out, this is going to be like, one trade down and then we're gonna try to take our money back within the next trades but hopefully still working all right now it needs to trigger over let's see here Uh, now it needs, we need to see a print of 64 in YM. We need to see a print of 64 in order to accelerate higher. Fingers crossed. We need 27,164 for a print in YM. In MNESMP, we need to see a print of 30,07. Raise the stop in YM to 27108. We're getting a sandwich on the two minute. We need to we need to see a print of 50 and then we need to see a print of what was that? 64, 164. Uh, no, Stan, the risk for today uh, is a little bit too elevated to do ads. Uh, the Dow has better structure than the rest of the indices at this point. 10 o'clock reversal time. We need to see that 163. Come on, 163, 164. <laughs> Herb. Rocket emoji, thumbs up emoji. Come on, let's do this. By the way, guys, the indices are still calibrating. They're not fully adjusted yet two more minutes and we may be raising the stop 
Two more in two minutes, we're going to be raising the stops. Come on, YM, we need 10 points from you at this point for you to start going back up. Very close, very close, very close. Messy morning, guys, by the way. Very mo messy, messy morning. I'm using a heart stop, April. One more point, baby. All right, 164. We got a, an official 15-minute trigger rotation. Let's raise the stop to 133. YM, raise the stop to 133. Let's get this baby into the 170s. It has some uh, resistance into the 175. We need to get it 10 points closer into that point. <clears throat> SMP stop to break even. SMP stop to break even. SMP stop to break even. Raise the stop in YM to 150. YM to 150. Raise stop to 150. Raise the stop to 150. So we're in the money with our uh, stop raised into YM and uh, into the uh, S&P we're at break even. So we're in the money in YM and we're at break even with the S. So far we have zero risk in this market. Thank you, Herb. We need to see a print of 73. Thank you, Dex. You can post it in the room so everybody can see it if you don't mind. I really appreciate it, you guys. We don't have any secrets here. So I really appreciate it if you... Um... <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate it if you guys, uh, if you guys post uh, for uh, everyone to see. All right, guys, the next thing that we're looking in the market is uh, we want YM to print a 173. If it prints a 173, we're going to get it to 180. And we want the S&P to trade over um, 3008. Come on, 73. Herb, thumbs up emoji. Let's see that 173 print. I mean, we're in a comfortable situation right now. Um, I don't want to choke the trade yet. But 160. Uh Herb, Herb, lock in, lock in, just Herb, just Herb, lock in 160. Herb, just you, just you, just you. Just you for those accounts, lock in 160. Thank you so much. The rest of us, we can live with it. <laughs> Or if you guys want to lock in 160, that's fine. Lock 306 in S&P. Lock one point in ES right now. Lock one point in ES right now. 305 to 306. Lock 306. Thank you. Thank you, Herb. Okay, I'm still in. I'm still in. 
Uh, I don't have a lot of time now, but I will share this with you so you can see that I'm actually executing the trades. This is my entry price in YM. I really don't want to navigate to my other active tra trading screen for ES, but I'm taking all the trades, right? So ES lock in. Three zero zero six. Boom. Lock in that one point. Come on, one seventy three. Me too, Ron. S and P's out. We locked in one point. No velocity. No velocity. Everybody lock in 160 right now in YM. Everybody lock in 160 right now in YM. In fact, it's kind of like 156. We'll see. Doesn't want to break out here. It needs that 173 uh, like 173 174 it needs to print 174 and doesn't want to do it all right out guys boom done why i'm done oh my goodness are you kidding me what just happened Wow, we just got Algo push out tweet. Probably I didn't receive any tweets right now. Herb, don't kill me. <laughs> 11, 11, it was an Algo, guys. It was at 10 10. It was at 10 10. It was at 10 10. Imagine being short, guys. Exactly. Ha ha. We made money, so we don't care. But anyways, just imagine being on the wrong side of the trade. Some of you guys have been messaging. Okay, Trump. Okay, yes, yes, yes. There is news. There is news. <clears throat> uh, Trump's advisors considering interim China deal to delay uh, to delay tariffs. Ka-ching, ka-ching. That's right. But hey, you know what? We trail a little bit too tight. We just wanted to, let me see what, what price did I, did I get out? Yeah, 160. 160. All right. Being on the right side of the trade. Jeez, this is insane. It didn't want to do the one. Did I tell you guys that if it goes over 174, it's going to go back and I have the targets, but it was just too jittery. And we had, uh, we had rotations that happened on the five minute. I'm like, I'm like choking this after ECB. Unbelievable guys. Anyways, we made money. We're happy, but it could have been better. But one of the most important things that I want you that I want to illustrate today is that you need to be on the right side of the trade. I know some of you may, uh, some of you have private message me and were telling me that you guys were telling me that you were short, and I typed to you guys like, no, you do not short this market. It was a tweet. Well, it seems that tweets are running the world. All right, more volatility for us. Now we have to wait for the dust to settle. Probably into 1030, we're not going to be executing anything.
Yeah, no, I'm not happy. Yeah, why am 20 points? I'm shooting for more points and I'm looking for the price velocity. Gordon, awesome job, awesome job. I may not be taking all the indices, but I'm calling in the morning and I'm telling you guys what I'm seeing in the market. And I'm not even taking all the trades. I'm just taking one or two of, uh, of all the trades, but everybody's different. And some of you guys have different preferences, like some of you may only want to trade NASDAQ, some of you may only want to trade the MNE S&P, and trust me, the majority of, uh, of traders love to trade the MNE S&P, so I call everything. Bernardo, you exited 27,278. What? Bernardo, type it in the room, not only to me. Oh my God. And Bernardo, by the way, Bernardo's one of my students, and he's also in the trading room. Uh, Lynn, Lynn, you can get, uh, you, you can subscribe to Benzinga if you want to get the news like that. I use that service about one hundred ninety nine dollars a month, I think. If you're in the trading room, uh, I'm already subscribed, so uh, I'm going to alert you on that. Aw, thank you, Gordon. I appreciate it. Yeah, no trades right now, guys. We have to wait for this dust to settle. And by the way, grains are going to be on watch for possible swings. So we're going to look for um, corn. We're going to look for some soybeans but later this afternoon. <clears throat> I know, Uppy. <laughs> Crazy. Wayne, anybody can uh, can uh, can uh, sign up for the trading room. You don't need to take the course to be in the trading room. So I can take some questions right now going into 1030 because this uh, price is in full swing motion and I'm not jumping into anything. Or Api, yeah, we need a psychic whose job is to read the president's mind. And not only that, but uh, that, and that is a full-time job. Josh, your tweeter for Mr. President Trump is lagging. Why? I don't know. Mine was lagging as well because I was asking you guys, what is this? Because I just exited the trade and then bam. Twenty-seven, one thirty correction. That's true. All right. So you know, because now we have the time. Uh, now we have a little bit of time. Uh, let's go through some charts, and let's see how our game plan came into action in the trading session today. All right. So today we spoke about the fact that if we trade over these highs into the 250, 260, we're going to probably look for a continuation higher going into the 300 and 320. And look at our level, guys. And by the way, you can see that we don't have any prior resistance, right? This is a level that I teach, how to, I teach traders how, how to calculate uh, into, uh, into our class and how to come up with these levels. And you can see it right here. So it came in, it did that slingshot effect. So it pulled in and boom. That's why I'm not in a rush to short anything or to aggressively go long anything. So I wait for the high probability trade. Going into resistance, we're in massive resistance right now into the 270s. Okay, so th this is the level we have this level on when the day started. I calculate these levels every morning. And sometimes I leave them on for a longer period of time. So you can see that I have very clean charts. Price action is king. All right, I have received a, a question. Uh, Bernardo, you rocked it. You rocked it. <laughs> Theodore. 
<laughs> That's too funny. Guys, you have to post so everybody can see you. Uh, <laughs> all right. So um, I'm going to answer some of your questions. Just give me one, uh, uh, just one minute here to run through some charts so we can possibly identify some other traits, okay, after this crazy wacky move to the upside all right so strong resistance we have here into the 27 270 and we need the price to kind of find its own true balance between uh 27 200 and 27 uh 250 now okay so let it come in a little bit let it settle and then if we're getting some kind of price action um of uh, favorable price action for a setup for a pattern then we're going to be taking the trade but remember we talked about this in the pre-market game plan plan set into motion we locked in our money okay uh the m and &E s p and again you have no idea remember there could have been the uh in the worst case scenario the uh price uh could have uh could have come in for i don't know maybe 100 points Okay, so that's why we need to use on um, these very aggressive trades of the, of the morning, we need to use hard stops. Okay, 3,000 level intact. And remember, I was talking about the fact that we have support into the 3006, and then this level was violated, and I saw the possibility of a pullback into the 3,000. Now, remember, in the pre-market game plan, and you guys are going to receive uh, uh, you guys are going to receive uh, the recording. Please review the recording because I said any pullback to 3,000 and on a formation and a rotation off of this point is uh, going to is going to push the price higher back into the 3014 possibly and back into this uh, high of the day. Now, new high in the mini &E S&P. Again, hands off right now. Hands off. Do not jump into trades. All right, let's check Nazi. Uh, Nasty, we uh, spoke about the fact that it got the pullback and it had support into the 7,900 um, and uh, it has strong support into the 7,900 and we were looking for that four hour, okay? We were looking for that four hour reversal over 7,950 and I said that if we break over 7,950, we can actually push higher back into this high of 63 and higher beyond that the next target would have been the 7980 and we have the target right there uh so this is nasdaq and russell i have no interest in russell right now um uh to uh to trade uh russell was uh a, a bit difficult because it pulled in a little bit further than we would have liked and it violated this prior low we needed to we needed it to hold the 70s and uh as i mentioned i wanted it to hold a 67 to 70, 67, 68 to 70. And it came in a little bit more, but this is what Russell does, okay? This is what Russell does. Uh, so going back to the one hour, zooming in a little bit, uh, you can see that it, it triggered, so it went a little bit higher, but it's not responding well, okay? It's not responding well. Uh, Pablo, and I'm gonna answer, are you, I have like a, a, a 20 questions pending here. You guys have your uh, hand raised, so I'm going to get to that. Uh, what is the William percent R indicator on the chart? I use the William percent R mostly for higher time frames, uh, meaning one hour, four hour, um, uh, daily, weekly, uh, monthly. I mostly use it for stocks, but uh, I use it for uh, indices and some commodities as well. It is an indicator that shows oversold and overbought conditions. Uh, on higher time frames. All right, so let's move back to chart price action and let me answer some questions. Okay, all right. Uh, Jane, oh, I'm glad you took it as well. Uh, NASDAQ, you probably got in at the overnight where, where you had a really nice setup there. All right, let me answer some questions now. Let me see. Okay, you know, that's really funny because I can't see you guys. I can't see, I can't see your questions when I go to the, okay. That's a bit weird. 
All right, guys, if you don't mind, can you please retype uh, all your questions here into, uh, into the room? Whether it is private or whether it is for everyone, whatever it is, whatever your trading question is. All right. And then I'm going to go back to the game plan and we're gonna to have to do the game plan for 10.30. 10.30 is the prime time trigger time, but this tweet <laughs> kind of like messed everything up for us, you know? So I'm glad some of you guys didn't choke the trade and actually, you know, uh, you're actually, uh, uh, you actually have a really fantastic day. <clears throat> All right, what do you mean by calibration? Gordon, at the beginning of the trading session, you have the influx from uh, a market that is closed and a market that uh, is still open. The London session is open, the New York trading session is just about to open. When, the both, when both markets collide, there's a difference in contracts and these, are, uh, uh, these orders are trying to get filled at the open and this produces that, uh, that wackadoodle do into the market of fleecing effect wicks up and down and that uh, sometimes range bound side action uh, range bound price action uh, that you have from the open typically in a non-volatile market you're going to have a calibration that lasts anywhere from uh, from two minutes to five minutes or worst case scenario 15 minutes and high volatility uh, uh, envir in a high volatility environment that can last up to a couple of hours. Um, how do you know when the market has stopped calibrating? Well, the levels, and this is something that I teach in class, uh, you have to wait for the market to settle down. So I'm gonna try to uh, simplify the answer. Uh, you're gonna have to wait for the market to settle down and establish support in a prior support area that we discussed in a pre-market game plan. So we need to have a confluence zone. These confluence zones are gonna give you and are gonna provide you with the required information and the confirmation uh, that that is a support level that is likely going to hold for the trading session, for at least for a few hours in the trading session, like we did. So uh, these uh, uh, calibration times are very important uh, to watch and observe and not be very aggressive right off the open. I do have a strategy that I teach in the class that teaches traders how to get in within the first two minutes of, uh, the, first two minutes of the market move uh, or the first five minutes or the first 15 minutes. So these are, uh, three strategies that I teach in the class uh, if you're a more aggressive trader. But even in those instances where you're very aggressive, you still have to uh, watch the market and do your analysis in microseconds uh, because you have to evaluate these, uh, these levels. Uh, do you ever use a trailing stop? And uh, would that help in this trade? I did use a trailing stop, but I trail my trades manually. So I don't have a percentage. I look at the areas of confluence to raise my stop. So every single time when I initiate a trade, my primary goal is to try to get that trade lifted if we're into a long position so I can place my stop in a really good hefty support zone, but I wanna make sure that that support zone is into a break-even area to have a break-even stop because my primary goal is capital preservation and I don't wanna put my capital to risk, but I wanna work with uh, what the market provides me and I try to do a break-even trade to have a risk zero on the trade like we had in the m and &E S&P and uh, YM and then uh, have the trade take off. Uh, Denny, for somebody who works full time, is your service something that can benefit from maybe learning by being in the room one to two hours a day? Then take learning uh, to trade Europe uh, or the Asian markets. Denny, I don't think that because you would have to be in the trading room. Um, so you would have to be in the trading room. So if you have a job, I don't know if you can attend every single day. I know that a lot of members, you know, um, a lot of my members just hop on, uh, hop off uh, the room and some of them are full, are working full time, but they're coming for my pre-market game, game plan and then they uh, stay in a little bit. They have the uh, trading room and they're using uh, earbuds uh, at work uh, to get it to, and to actually get and execute some trades. 
Uh, but I don't know if this is something that works for you. You could give it a go. Uh, you can definitely trade. And I have a lot of traders that were my students and trade the Asia, only the European and the Asian market. I have a lot of traders also on the West Coast, California, Hawaii, Alaska, that are trading, uh, that are also swing trading. So it is a great style to and in swing trading, you have more accuracy. You're going to uh, you're going to have much more stable support zones uh, off of uh, when you're trading. You're going for higher targets, so it really works out. Uh, it really works out great. Uh, so uh, for that, so yeah, sure. Again, and uh, 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 Denny, if uh, we have a service, it's called Active Futures. And uh, this service trades your uh, uh, trades your account. So we get to trade your account. So if you don't have the time, if you guys don't have the time uh, to trade your account, we could do that for you. So you don't have to be logged into the trading room. We take the trades for you. So if you want more information on that, we have Herb. He is the broker that executes the trades for us. Uh, Herb, can you please say hi and also uh, type uh, in your email address if everyone, if anyone is interested in the Active Futures program, we could trade for you uh, and you could give uh, Herb a call or you could visit our website um, at tradeello.com for slash Active Futures and uh, uh, just fill out that information and Herb is going to get back to you right away with, uh, with any information, with any information um that you request all right so price is quieting down guys it is 10 30 this is the prime time trigger time which pretty much messed up the market because that news announcement just uh, just uh, actually placed the market on fire uh we're heading and we are into the 280 280 is resistance area for the mini dow uh so far we're trading in the upper side of the cluster now what i want to do and typically what i do at 10 o'clock but we were in trades uh, at 10 o'clock and what I usually do at this time of the day is I do a little bit of analysis and uh, try to game plan uh, our session from 10:30 to about 11:30. so we're gonna actively look for some setups right now uh, Ted uh, herb if you're here Ted uh, would want to have more information on that he uh, he uh, has uh, uh, oh you can't see it hold on uh, Ted I'm gonna forward this information to herb right now okay All right, there you go. Thank you for that, Ted. All right. All right, that's from Herb. All right, so uh, you guessed it, I'm still watching. So the two indices that are in on Prime Watch right now are still going to be YM and yes. Uh, NASDAQ is still into a little bit of uh, resistance here. In fact, they're all into resistance. S&P, if s is gonna break over 20, it's gonna, it's gonna really push higher. It's gonna push about nine to 10 points higher. All right, so uh, what I typically do at this time of the day is I go through the market and try to establish a new game plan for, uh, for the second half of the morning into, uh, into 10.30. So uh, let's see here, let me just get my, all right, here we go. So we have the 10 a.m. high and we have the 10 a.m. low, right? So what that means is that if we get a pullback into NASDAQ, into the 220 zone, we're going to be looking for a setup into this area for YM to propel higher. This is the 10 a.m. high in the S&P. This is the 10 a.m. low in the MNE S&P. As long as the 10 a.m. high is going to hold, we're going to be looking for pullbacks into 1030, possibly 1045 delayed because of the news announcement uh, in regards to China. And we're going to be looking for a formation, try to look for a setup into this vicinity of the 3013 for the price to continue higher to higher targets. Like I said, we still have a tradable void to 3029, which is the all time high. Also, we have the 10 a.m. high into NASDAQ, and we have a consolidation which coincides with the 10 a.m. low into NASDAQ here. And any pullback into the 76, uh, 79.60 to 79.55 around this area can be seen, or even 50 can be seen as a push back into the highs, back into the 79 
80, which is the high of the day currently right now uh, for the New York trading session price action. And we're going to be looking for a continuation into the 70, uh, 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 into, uh, into 8,000. So that's about 20 points from the high from today. Actually, the biggest jittery uh, trade comes from Russell and Russell is to me, pretty messy at this point. Uh, 10 a.m. high, uh, we are gonna be considering the 1580 and the low into the 60s. Uh, and you can see that it uh, came back from the highs. It did not respect the 10 a.m. high, but it's trading within the range. So right now it's not ready for a breakout or anything else. So at this point, it really needs to break out higher and then consolidate somewhere around this area for the price to take off. Okay, let me know if you guys have any questions on any of these patterns. Okay, let me know if you guys, so now the basic uh, thing, uh, the, basically what we need to do is wait for the pullback. That's pretty much, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple at this point. Uh, this morning I mentioned that if we're gonna, if the price is gonna break below 1520, it's probably gonna head back into the 1513, right? Remember we talked about my light, look how it is reacting. If this area is gonna halt, we may see another ascent into gold, but we need to see a pattern development around this level. So now I think it's a, it's a really good time to try to narrow it down to a smaller time frame. And I'm gonna try to go, not that, not that small here, but let's do a 30 minute. Uh, by the way, one of the questions today was what platform I'm using. I'm using the Thinkorswim platform. If you guys are trading futures, we have Herb. He's using Gains platform. All the trades that are executed in our active uh, futures program are executed on the Gains platform. He is the broker uh, there. And uh, he, if you guys are looking for a platform and if you would like, he can set you up with a two week free trial to see if you like the platform. Okay. Before you commit to anything. So if you're interested on that, uh, uh Herb, just, uh, just, uh, email Herb and say, Hey, yes, I'm ready. You know, I want, um, um, I want to test drive it. Okay. All right, so you have a lot of information here, a lot of information. So if one of your questions was, hey, is this trading room legit? Is she taking all the trades? Are they really taking this? Well, the answer is yes, because believe it or not, all the trades are executed by Herb and all our, uh, all our members are getting statements at the end of the trading session from Herb. Okay, so yeah, we take, we take all the trades. Okay, now look, look how this level is reacting, guys. What do you think of that? Pretty impressive, right? But we don't really have a formation. This is a very, it was a very aggressive buy off of the level, very strong reaction. You have to wait a little bit, maybe over um, um, 1518 by 1512 and a half or 12. Not a big fan of it, not a big fan of it. This is very aggressive, Seven, uh, I'm sorry, 1518 in gold by 1512. All indices are in pullback mode. Uh, Lynn, we have members that are using TradeStation and they're having a really good uh, experience with it. Yeah, I like trading. So uh, I like trading. I, uh, I have used a TradeStation and in fact, um, I sent you guys some information on the TradeStation. TradeStation has become our official, uh, our official partner along with Herb. Uh, with gains. So we do have brokers that are interested in working with us. 
Uh, Ronnie does trade station work in Canada. You would have to call them. Uh, if you have received um, the email from me with the recording at the bottom of the page, I, uh, I provided you guys some information about uh, uh, opening an account with uh, trade station. Wait, yeah, I'm not very interested um, at this point. I'm gonna go back now to the uh, to the two minute chart, so you can see how I'm going back and forth in time frames, trying to find the perfect alignment and the perfect setup off of our key locations. So far, we have support in the Dow at twenty seven one fourteen. And we have resistance into the 300. There's a shallow five minute rotation happening here. Yeah, Herb, and I don't even know why that is because, uh, you know, they are basically allowed to trade CFDs, which, which carry like the highest degree of risk like ever. Contracts for difference. So to me, it's mind boggling how these US companies cannot, you know, open uh, reps there, uh, you, know, what, you know, for trading stocks and futures and Forex, et cetera. But yet, you know, there are companies, international companies that are opening reps there that where you can, uh, you can trade CFDs. <laughs> Financials are back up a uh, new high the day in XLF. I know, yeah, it's it's crazy. But Herb, how do you know that? I mean, 25 years you're so young. <laughs> We're so young here. <laughs> Okay, we're just waiting for the market to settle down a little bit. Verizon, new high. Loving Verizon. By the way, we are in Verizon. We have been for a long time in Verizon, and we're very patient here in the trading room. Extremely patient. All right, we just have to wait for the dust to settle. The volume has subsided considerably. Uh, the news came exactly. Let me see when I exited my uh, my YN trade here. What time? Okay, uh, I was taken out, so my stop was hit at ten ten twenty six. Ten o'clock, ten minutes, twenty six seconds, and this algo hit. The algo hit. Take a listen to this. The algo hit at ten ten and thirty seconds. Four seconds after we got trailed out. Four seconds. Unbelievable. Had we given it another four points, we would have still be in, and it went exactly to the 306 target. 306 was the max target. All right, let me show you the targets because I already have them here. They're a little bit different than when you uh, th than what you have here. You see that that three oh six. You're gonna see it in just one second. Just give me one second. because I have to detach my chart here so you guys can see it. All right, so I have my pre-market work done and I have my targets. And look at the target right here, 306. See where it went? Is that precision or what? And then the next target is 27,404. Okay, so it's trying to consolidate here. And this is a two minute chart. 
Okay, so you're seeing my levels. They're a little bit different than here. So I'm watching two sets of charts. April, I have a crystal ball. <laughs> Uh, I'm using a little service. That's why we're having uh, that's why we're having such a good accuracy here because we we know we kind of know these levels. And uh, where algos are going to hit and that's why we're having uh, Oh, absolutely, James. Not all trades are winners. Not all trades are winners. The most important thing is to have majority of winners and very small losses. That, that's the key. Lynn, I agree. You can, you can prepare for everything except for the tweets. Today was no exception. Today was no exception. But don't be complacent in a trade. Always be actively trailing, actively so when you're in a trade, just, just press it, press it, press it, press it. It's your money. Protected. <laughs> okay. John, thank you. All right. So things are really quieting down right now. Uh, remember tomorrow we have the contract roll. Uh, when we roll into the December uh, into the December contract. And uh, we may have some very whippy price action going into going into tomorrow. So I don't know if we're still going to um, I don't know if we're still going to get a great trading environment going into tomorrow. Uh, see what I mean about gold? Gold may not be ready because it has not triggered our uh, our entry into the 18. So it's fizzling out. Now I have no interest. Now it may retrace and there are strong bands of support all the way into the 1510. Uh, we also have price action consolidation to the left-hand side of the trade that can actually predict uh, this area to hold all the way into the 1510. So MU made a new high yesterday and today over $51 again. This is massive. Natural gas storage uh, pushed the price of natural gas higher. Merck is on a mission of recoup. Just pointing out some trades that we're already in. My targets on Verizon are actually uh, into the 65. So I have, uh, I have Verizon for long term. Sunil is something that you cannot subscribe to. So it's a very dear friend of mine. He's an algo programmer. So he's actually able to tell me what to look for. And uh, I, I can't disclose that information. But I can report in the room whether that was an algo push or whether it was uh whether it was news or anything else yes they're pretty good uh dividends with verizon and in fact uh next year um we're gonna be getting ready uh now remember one thing you have to know how to trade pre-election years election years historic data how to compile everything i've been trading for 20 years and this is what I do for a living. So I know everything that happens in the market, well, except for the unannounced announcements or tweets, et cetera. But I know how to prepare myself and I know how, what kind of trading plan I need to have as I'm approaching these years. So pre-election years are usually very bullish. And this year has, been, uh, has, has proven that already. And we're nine months into it, uh, eight, and a, uh, eight and a half months into it, let's say, or nine, whatever. Uh, what is September? Okay, so we're uh, we're nine months into it, and uh, so far um, it has been extremely bullish. If you look on our portfolio on our website, uh, you can see that the majority of trades that we made are to the long side. 
uh, and uh, we will continue to be long as well uh, as long as the market is providing us information of a bullish environment. Okay, by the way, guys, they, there may be a new signal here. Um, it needs to clear out the 65 level. The stop is going to be a little bit wide here. So it may, uh, you, you, you may use micros, uh, why it may be a long, hold on, hold on. Let me just, uh, aggressively 65, 65 long, aggressively 65 long, uh, with a stop of 225. 65 long, 225, 65 long. And in fact, the confirmation is gonna come at 73, but 65, 65 long. The real trigger is 75. So if you wanna wait till 75, it makes more sense. But I already got in. We'll wait on it. Yeah. All right. Uh, now we need to uh, see just uh, fizzling out here. 225 hard stop. Two twenty five is the hard stop. Yes, no trades for a yes right now. No trades for a yes. All right. This was fast. Okay, so why I'm stopped. This is not an algo. This is not an algo push. I did not receive anything. No news at this point. Let's just watch it. It happened super fast. There's some balancing happening, probably some profit taking from that uh, from that move. And uh, uh, trading is going to become, uh, like I said, thin, jittery because we are approaching the roll and there's going to be balancing. Let me just take a quick look. Volume is starting to uh, come in a little bit more into the December contract. The December contract is trading right now 27,132. We're trading right now into the 50, 50, 53 things. Very fast. Price is moving super fast. So there's more contract flow now into uh, a more volume flow into the new contract. We're back into support. No damage done to charts right now. All right, so finally, uh, gold trading over 1518. Look at our line right here. So keep in mind that a lot of traders are taking long and short positions off of these levels that we have permanently on our charts.
Oh, Mark. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for that information. Do you mind if I share it in the room? All right. Here's what it came. Here's what came out. Thank you. I don't like anything here. We have to wait for the price to settle down. We have no idea if it wants to pull in a little bit more or if it wants to rotate. Price is on support, 3,000 is support for the S&P, but you don't have any formation, April. We're not getting in without confirmation. Oil continuing to drip lower, natural gas stabilizing a little bit into the highs into the 256. Financials pulling in a little bit. Everything is back into support, including Russell. Big bar flush on the five minute and also on the 15 minute. The 15 minute looks like it may want to have a continuation lower to 27,100, but we're still trading into the 150 area of support. As you can see here, this black line is a confluence zone. The market doesn't know what to do with this piece of information is not committed on either side of the tape. We're four minutes away from the top of the hour and the one hour candles are not looking that pretty. The one hour candles are suggesting that we may be coming in a little bit further. Price action is still hawkish at this time and is trying to determine its directional bias. No trades initiations at this time. I can call a very aggressive trade, okay? A very, very aggressive trade. I'm not gonna uh, type it in the room. It's not going to be an official trade. However, if you're looking for something that is thrilling, you could take uh, YM long over 175 with a protective stop under one uh, with a protective stop into the 130 and look for a target of 27200. So it's at 174. Just watch the trade. Just watch the parameters, how they're working. And again, very volatile market. Very volatile morning. Very volatile market. We have the big ascent, the rocket bar to the upside consolidation, rocket bar back into the support. We have just erased this nice work from a uh, price action that took the price action higher into that 306 zone. Remember, the trigger for this is still through, uh, 175. If you're watching, just watch it. I'm not doing anything either. So I'm, I'm not executing the trade. If I execute the trade, you're going to see it on the screen. But just watch the trade. It may want to consolidate into this area or it may want to pull in a bit further. Like I said, the early charts are not looking that happy and the Dow may pull, want to pull back into the 27,060 to 27,000. That is the next support zone. It's all up to this. Price, I couldn't pick the more choppier day to trade with you guys. One seventy five never triggered, still consolidation. We have uh, consolidation within the last six minutes. We're trying to calibrate into this area. Twenty-seven, one twenty, and the Dow is still support. Uh, the S and P still hold, holding the three thousand seventy-nine hundred seventy-nine ten. Still support into Nasdaq. Still has a little bit of elevated uh, support zone right here into the seventy-nine fifteen. So it has a higher 
a higher high onto the two minute pattern. Russell is a little bit weaker. It has been weaker all day today, and this may be conducive of another push down. Remember, Russell was our barometer in the trading room. If you were with us last year, uh, as we were trading the treacherous market of volatility in February uh, and into the end of the year, Russell was our market gauge. Top of the hour in five seconds. And we're gonna have, we're gonna go back to the five minute charts. And let's see if we're, this doesn't look good here. We're issuing a little bit of jitterness into the 140 to 175 and really wide ranges. By the way, today, wide, wide ranges. So there was news for the up move. There was news for the down move. The market is trying to digest and hold this area. This is very impressive for price. Russell is not continuing. Uh, Russell is continuing to bleed back into the, close to the lows of the day. We're still holding the 140s levels and we're still calling around into that 150 support zone. That is a really hefty support zone. Let's see if we're gonna hold it there. Top of the hour, brand new hourly candles. The hourly candles are really wicked. Huge, huge, huge pin pointing to the downside more than to the upside into the Dow, the S&P and uh, NASDAQ and Russell. Just wanna show you very quickly how the hourly candle is looking here. This is the last hour price action activity. We navigated higher into the 306 and then we came back down to retest the support into the 150. This is a key level right here. If we break below this level, the next level of confluence is gonna be into the 27050. We really don't know. We have a lot of turbulence within this area. We have another level of support into the 27100 zone, which also coincides with the prior low from the open range that we had into the Dow at the open of the New York trading session at 9.30. The S&P is back into the 303, at, uh, 303 area, 305, 303 to 305 area, as long as this area is gonna be seen as a stable area of support, the price may still bounce higher. No trades into the S&P unless it breaks uh, above and it trades into the 3015, that's when we're gonna be looking bullish. If it's gonna break below the 3,000, there may be a chance for those of you that are aggressive short to get, uh, uh, to get as much as three to five points to the downside because the next support level is into the 20, uh, 2995. Things are not looking positive for price action. Russell continues to bleed. NASDAQ continues to uh, remain a little bit firm into the 7930 area, 7930 to 7940 right now. So it main, it's maintaining its elevated leg up into the 7920 zone. A key level to watch into the Dow is still going to be 27,175. If it breaks over that area, there can be an aggressive trade to the upside that may push the price a little bit higher into the 200 zone. So you need to see it after, over this alert in order to start propelling higher and you have a little bit of tradable void going into 200. One seventy five is going to be key. They're consolidating at the low right here into the one thirty so far. YM the S and P trading still into that three hundred five digestion zone. Russell getting a little bit of a lift here. Uh, gold reacting off of our level here. Like I said, very aggressive traders can actually look to buy off of these levels super aggressively. But again, 
because I'm moderating the room. I'm on the more conservative side. However, I can point you if you're, it depends on how your, depends on how your approach to your portfolio is. If you have an aggressive approach to your portfolio, it could definitely take more aggressive trades. Uh, I tend to be on the conservative side because I lead a group of traders. So we do have uh, a lot of members in our trading room that are following my trades to the T. So uh, that's one of the reasons that I'm extra careful in uh, selecting trades. Plus we run the auto, uh, the active futures program where Herb is executing the trades and we manage some, uh, uh, we manage people's money. Notice how the price is quelling in the mini Dow at that support zone into the 27,150 area. Like I said, very aggressive traders can still look to buy over. Oh, wait a minute. Dang, uh, it is 11.05. Aggressive traders actually can look over 160, but that's that's very iffy. That's very iffy. I would, so uh, I was. I still see seventy five for a positive entry into two hundred, and that would come with more confirmation. I think this is so super fragile here on the five. It's still coiling around this area. S and P still at three three thirty oh five, and Nasdaq still seventy nine thirty, still defending that twenty zone, and it has that upper leg up. So again, aggressive traders can look to buy off of these levels, either sixty or seventy five. Like I pointed out, for me, seventy five is providing. Uh, uh, it's providing a confirmation that the price is ready to commit to the upside. Right now, I don't have that for sure commitment. Uh, this comes with a wider stop, uh, but it also comes with confirmation, but aggressive traders can have actually a tighter stop. So if you're considering a trade off the 50 or the 60, you can apply a stop into the 135 and look for a first target into the 75 and a second target into the 80 and 90. Uh, Frank, do I consider a limit entry YM 27, 2738? Um... You mean for a long or a short, an entry long here, Frank? Okay, long or short. So I would buy it into this area with the uh, four progression higher. Obviously, if it breaks below the 32, uh, 32, 34, it can actually run into the 20s. But remember, this is the 10 a.m. low and we're still trading and um, in the latter uh, side of this range. So this may push the price a little bit, uh, a little bit lower here. So if we break below this area. Long, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You could have a really tight stop into 30, 130. And you can have a really, really tight stop. The chances of stopping out are higher than you get the trade with confirmation. That's the reason why I wait for confirmations. But if you are very aggressive, the problem with that, Frank, is that you can have multiple stop outs and those really small stop outs can actually mount up to a big, bigger stop. So for me, I like to wait for the price confirmation. We have, oh, uh, it's 11.08. I'm watching for the 11.15. 11.15 may provide us a single signal to go long, like I said. Uh, 
the five minute already triggered here. So still watching on this 15 now. It depends on where this range is going to see we're back into the trigger remember the trigger into the 60 27 160 this is the 15 minute trigger 27 160 that took our price higher we're back into the same area Now this is the key location here. <clears throat> All right, let's do it guys. 175, 175 by 134, 175 by 134. Why I'm long, why I'm long. 175 by 134. We're going to be looking for 80, 90, 200 for targets. Very aggressive, but it's going to come with a confirmation very soon. It's 11, 11. We have four minutes to go into the confirmation. Four minutes to confirmation. This is on the aggressive side. Thanks, Herb. Heart stop. 34 heart stop. Three minutes to 11.15. We're, count, we're on a final countdown to trigger time again. I don't like the price action in uh, ES or NASDAQ right here. A little bit weaker. Climbing back up, 80 guys, we're having, we're one point away from target one into the 80s. Target two is into the 90s, target three is 200. I don't have time to type because I'm in the trades. Uh, and we're looking for 213. Two minutes to confirmation. We need to hold this upper range area. So 150 needs to hold right now. Thirty one thirty four is the stop, Tony. First number is the trigger. The second number is the stop. When you join our trading room, uh, you will be provided with uh, information on how we call the trades. And uh, we're also going to provide you the guidelines for trading. What is the stop, stop, hard stop, soft stop, mental stop, all that stuff, how much room you need to give each trade and 
all that information. You're welcome, Tony. Sorry for um if 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 you heard me, I have been on the mic and I've been saying like 175 entry, 134 stop. Thirty seconds to uh, confirmation. Thirty seconds to confirmation. The confirmation is going to come at one eighty. If we break over one eighty and thirty seconds, we're going to move higher to two hundred. We need thirty seconds. Twenty seconds. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. five seconds we have our confirmation we need 80. we need 180 27 180 print is gonna almost get us into that 200 area we're gonna get that little lift when the price is going to hit 180 we're going to lift our stop to 160. when the price is going to trade over 180 we're going to lift our stop to 160. We're above 182, we have our confirmation. Bam, lift your stop guys to 160, lift them. Let the choking process begin. 187, 190, we need that 200 and 213. bam 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 let's lock let's go let's go let's go we have about 30 seconds before the next uh, stop lift 30 seconds into the next stop lift we're going to be raising the stop to 180. just wait on it wait on it 15 seconds 10 seconds. Bam, lift your stops, guys. 180 is your new trail. 180 is your new trail. Take some profits here. Take some profits, take some profits, take some profits, but leave one lot in. Leave one lot in. Leave it in. Our next target is 215. Uh, 213, I'm sorry, 213. 30 seconds into the next lift. 30 seconds into the next lift. We have 313 as a target and then we have 330. Huge resistance into 213 huge resistance into 213 then we have room to 230 220 we need to see a print over 198 we need to see a print over not 198 we're not lifting the stop now no stop lift Momentum is stalling. Mm, I can't see. Momentum is stalling. Stop remains the same. Stop is still 180. We need to see a print of 198. Then we need to see a print over 203. Stop 
Stop is the same. Come on, 198. We need to see that print of 198, 199. And then we're going to do another lift into 185. When the price is going to be into 199 to 200, the stop is going to go up to 185. Lift the stop, lift the stop, 185, 185, 185. Two hundred. We have the two hundred in the bag, guys. Strong resistance here. We have uh, some confluence zones here into the two hundred. We need to print some more green. You could actually start locking in, locking in, locking in a little bit here. So your stop is right now one eighty-seven. One eighty-seven. 187 for the stop, 187 for the stop. Lock it at 190, 190 guys, lock everything at 190 and you're done, 190, 190. Done, we're done, we're done guys, 190. Momo gone, Momo gone right now. Thank you, Herb. You have to understand guys that, um, this is not, you know, your cup of tea market. I mean, this is not a really great market to trade. You know, so we're, 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 what I'm trying to show you here is that there are opportunities along the way. And also um, what I'm trying, what I'm trying to do, I mean, we still may have, you know, price velocity that may get back into the 200, but what we're trying to do in the room is not be complacent and try to, you know, uh, let the trade just slip. So we're using these stops. Gordon, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, let me remind you then that in the active um, futures program, we try to stay away from uh, high, vo uh, high volatility trades, okay? So we're trying to stay away from these kind of trades, which are bottom pickers. Uh, once again, you know, guys, if you are bearish, just, just please post it in the room. If you guys are bearish and continuing to short in this move, I mean, go ahead. You know, I really don't have an interest in, in following, uh, your short positions here and, and your ads as the trade goes against you. So I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, um, All right, so what do you guys think so far? What do you guys think so far of the room? What are your thoughts? What, what would you like to see improved in the room? And what, do you, what are the things that you don't like about the room? Thank you. Oh, thank you, Herb. Awesome. Thank you, Sunil. Yeah, it, you have to make it non-emotional. Here it is, the 213. Darn. Uh, the reason why I uh, closed the trade and I trailed it too tight was because uh, the last trail needed, the, the reality is that 
I didn't want to give it all the way into 80 because that would lock in only five points. And you really don't know when the next volatility is going to, uh, going to strike. Plus we had a huge area of resistance into, two, uh, into the 200. So from 80 to 200, I wasn't, um, ready to give 200 uh, to 20 points back into the market. You know what I mean? So I wanted to lock in. So uh, sometimes I like to lock in early, but sometimes we get for these, uh, these bigger moves, obviously, because this is what we're here for. But man, this was like, ah, uh. thank you, Ed. Awesome. Thanks, April. Uh, Tony, if you guys want to join, I'm not going to do any kind of selling or anything like that today. So today is only going to be about trading. I have no interest in doing that. But if you guys want to uh, want to join the trading room, you can visit our website and you, there's the trading room tab there. Thank you, Martin. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thanks for signing up, signing up and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, Greg. All right, now we're running into uh, this 220 was a final target for the trade and it was, um, uh, this is, I think the price is gonna pull back from this point. We are into some overnight resistance. We're also into the 20 SMA. Uh, yeah, Lynn, and you should, you should be holding on because you don't have any, in fact, right now in ES, you could actually lift your stop. If you're, uh, if you're in the trade, you can protect some of your profits. I'm going to give you the level that I'm watching to 3000. So your stop should be 3000. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate it. Very precise, clear directions. So I think that it's pretty easy to follow even if you're new to trading. Just wanna see NASDAQ here. NASDAQ not responding that well today. In YM, I trailed it. I typically don't trail this tight, but because we had the avalanche down right after that news. And so we had the news announcement, we had the consolidation, and then we had the avalanche down that spooked a lot of traders, right? And we were cautiously waiting for another entry opportunity. And like I said, I really got aggressively there uh, with, uh, 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 with YM on our first entry. And uh, uh, the thing is that I was looking for the confirmation on the 15. I walked you through like literally second by second of what I'm looking in the market. Um, Ed, your first session in the room and you enjoyed it. Good job. April, you're rocking it. Look for uh, 30, uh, 30, uh, 30, 14 as a target. And start trailing at 3009, 3009 or 3010. Just trail some, just don't be complacent here because we're trading back into the chop. And there are no guarantees that the price is going to explode higher or continue lower. I mean, take a look at the confusion that this massive, uh, massive hourly, let me show you guys the hourly candlesticks um, um, that we had here. Uh, in fact, the worst candlestick that we had was in the Dow, but we relied on our area of support and that saved us. Uh, we also have an area of support into 3000 and likely it looks like the S&P is gonna go back to 3013. If 3013 is gonna be, um, it's going to be tested, then we can still look for a continuation higher back into the 3020. Remember this volatility is expected um, uh, this volatility is expected because of the contract role. And like I said, uh, there's a lot of volume that is being pulled 
out of this contract that we're trading right now, out of these contracts and the indices, and the volume is moving, and especially swing traders, they're already rolling. So Lynn, if you're a swing trader, you probably have rolled or you need to roll very soon, okay? So if you're in any swing trades, guys, you need to roll, okay? You need to start rolling or close the trades and reopen it in, a, uh, in the new contracts, whatever you wanna do. Wayne, I really like how you get out so much information. Yeah, sure, I mean, we're in it to make money, right? Our goal is to make money. There you go, there you go. All right, let's go back to the fives. In volatile markets, I tend to choke the trades because I want to get, I don't wanna go into negative territory and I wanna lock in some profits as I'm going higher. When I'm having nice, smooth price action, uh, you know, when I'm having a trend day, when we're having a trend day, or when the price is being absorbed into tra uh, tradable voids, then I trail a little bit on the looser side. Okay, and then I do that. All right, so this is the resistance uh, that uh, that we're up against here, and we have a confluence zone. We have the 200 SMA and the five minute, and we also have the prior high from the uh, from the open. We have a uh, the second leg of the uh, of the trade that is lift that had the lift right. So it had the what compared to the prior low that was set into the 10 o'clock. Uh, so currently we're holding the trend. So it means that for the afternoon trading session, we may still be looking for a continuation higher back into the highs. Okay. Um, Dan, you have the portfolio performance uh, on our website. It's tradeoutloud.com for slash performance, or you could go at tradeoutloud.com. Sorry, I'm not going to type it in my hand really hurts. I'm only typing one, one hand. So I'm making great effort here. So I have eight stitches and one finger on the left hand. But Dan, if you don't mind, go on our website. You can see the full portfolio there. All right. So I think that pretty much we're going to be stalling here a little bit. Uh, it's 11.31. The uh, European market has actually, the London session has closed. Um and the European markets are completely closed right now. So it's just us, the uh, US traders. And remember, we're heading into the contract role. Things are gonna become very jittery for the afternoon trading session. Once again, notice how gold is reacting off of this support zone. Off of this support zone. And remember, we keep these levels for you guys. I didn't used to do this, but now we're keeping these levels for you guys here. So you can take your own trades and customize your own trades based on, uh, based on what we have going on right now. Okay. Uh, Arman, Arman is asking, is anyone trading oil today? Well, oil, I, I didn't have, I have absolutely zero interest and I have zero interest in oil today because it's consolidated. So it's not doing anything. Uh, Ed, you have to go 11.30 p.m. in Singapore. You got a day job tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Anka. Thank you so much, Ed, for being with us today. And uh, hope you enjoyed it and it was useful for you. Uh, as far as oil is concerned, like I said, uh, in the pre-market game plan, you know, the monthly chart is is in a doji, still very early. It has triggered, uh, it has triggered uh, for the upside, as long as $50 is not going to be violated, it could still gyrate to the upside. So you could still get the long impulse for it. Uh, from the weekly charts, uh, from the weekly charts, uh, it's trading within the prior week's range. You can see that last week's low was into the 5290 area. This is support for, and actually the last two trading weeks prior to this one, we had support into the 53 and 5290. So this area needs to hold in order for the price to progress higher. Uh, the reality is that gold actually triggered uh, this breakout on the weekly, which is super powerful. And I was waiting for, uh, for an entry 
uh, over $58 to go long, but I'm really happy that I waited and this is for a swing trade. So I waited because I wanted to see if uh, current price action is going to offer me a tighter stop, which it didn't. So it had a super wide stop, so I skipped it. So I wanted to watch further price action to see if we get some kind of consolidation below where I could possibly have a stop so I can put in some position sizing. Because without that, you have no idea how many contracts you're going to take the trade with, correct? All right, so going to the daily chart today, and this is the price action today going into Thursday. Uh, we had a sell. So yesterday we had a look at the pattern. It is descending and hold on a second. All right, let me get it here. The pattern is descending. This is the breakout that I spoke about on the weekly chart. The price progressed over 58, managed to, uh, managed to get into the, uh, 58, 70, 74, 75, I think. And then it started to come in yesterday. It came in, look at the, it broke below the 200 SMA. And now it broke below all of these SMAs right here, but it's still back into support. So now you are going to see, now it's probably going to be the moment of truth because if the price is going to stabilize and it's going to form a lid at 55, this may be a short going into 53. So um, going to, let's take it up to the four hour. I'm telling you, like, like I, I, I'm not very impressed with oil right now. I think that there's so much, so many other things that you can trade with a clear pattern other than risking, uh, risking anything here. All right. So the four hours giving us a really simple, uh, a really simple, um, um, let's say, uh, it's providing us a really simple, um, if a piece of information here, and that is that we have the lid at 5550. And as long as this lid is going to stay there because it's from prior price action and we have a doji, there are two things that can happen here that I would be interested in. So if it trades over 5550 today, uh, it may go back up to 56 and 5620 and maybe 5650. It's going to be like a really painful trade. If you're if you love to sit through pain and trades, this is a trade for you. But if not, I wouldn't even touch it. So far, the four hours in the doji, this candle is going to complete in about at 1 p.m. Eastern. So what time is it now? 1:30, uh, 11:30. So it's going to complete at it's going to complete like I said at one o'clock. If the price, like I said, is going to rotate above this point, you're going to enter probably some, some, um, uh, some uh, uh, squeeze into some squeeze where uh, there's going to be some profit taking from the shorts, right? So the price is going to try to ascend. There is no guarantee how far the price is going to go because there are so many resistance levels along the way. It's going to be super painful to sit into the trade. So you, the price doesn't have price velocity doesn't have a tradable voice it's going to be slapped around on either side of the tape it's just going to probably stop out gazillions of traders right here uh so uh this is what the one thing that i would watch because it's 54 remember 53 and 5290 are support maybe if that support is going to hold this is going to be that leg up so that higher low that higher low that is going to form even though it's kind of like a really shallow formation right off the prior $53 support. It's only a dollar elevated. So I'm not very interested. You can see here that I have some levels. So if I'm bullish, I want to see the price trade over 57.26. So to me, I really need to have a much better uh, price action uh, in it. Uh, also, a 56, 56.50 is also going to be an area of interest uh, right here. Uh, it's also going to be an area. I I'm just going to put an alert here uh and over this area i would be more aggressive uh more aggressive to the upside but other than that this is just a very choppy territory here like i said if you want to do a counter trend trade only over 55 30 i wouldn't do anything in between so anyone else uh anyone else trading oil today any of you guys are trading oil today feel free to share your uh your ideas this is what this room is about you guys can share your ideas as well and we can start talking about them that's the beauty of it. Of it, uh, the one hour in oil, you can see the moving averages are all fanning down. So that means that you may still have a further projection lower in price because you may have another acceleration. Uh, acceleration, but before you are getting that acceleration, uh, fifty-five fifty may be seen as the next area of uh, sell. Okay, and you could take it back down, back into fifty-five. So you're going to have about fifty cents here.
All right, so I'm going to bracket this area to place that I'll watch. Any time, Armin, any time. All right, price is a little bit slow right now. We're getting ready for our lunch break. I doubt that we're going to initiate any kind of trades uh, going into 12 o'clock. Uh, price is taking its time. As you can see right now, we have found the new ranges for the trading session today. And this is something that I look at, especially at 1130 as I'm going into, uh, as I'm going into lunch. So this is kind of like a pre-mapping for the afternoon trading session. All right, so let's uh, take it right here and let me show you. So these are the 10 a.m. lows. So this is support for price. We break below this area, we may accelerate lower. These are the highs into the 280s. We break above this area, we're gonna continue higher. Um, so things are pretty easy at this point. We are range bound. We have our, uh, we have our new range, uh, 120 to uh, 280. And the price is right smack in the middle, as you can see it right now. So it could go in either direction. Because it is mid-range, uh, aggressive traders can look to look at this little range over 240 and may go back into the 260 and the next target into the 280. Okay, remember, you may be stuck in this trade through lunch. So if this is something that you like to trade, remember that, you know, you can uh, actually... <clears throat> you could actually try to leg in. The stop is going to be below uh, uh, into the uh, into the 200. So you're going to have a 40 point stop here into the Dow. Okay, so 220 uh, by 200. Uh, the M&E &E S&P, where uh, the 218 level is uh, resistance, and we have the 3,000 at support. It's trading range bound right now over 314 can accelerate higher back into the 318. And we can possibly continue lower back below this range, back into the bottom of the range. So this may be, we may be entering scalpable territory going into the afternoon trading session. Uh, NASI is the choppiest uh, index right now, 79.80 for resistance. And we have support 79.00 and 79.10 for the New York trading session open. Range bound, price is right in the middle. You can see it right here. Strong support level between these two clusters. We break above 51. We're going to start accelerating higher into the 70s and into the 80s. If we break below that, uh, we may actually revisit a 79.20 or so. Russell Rooney trying to point higher and trying to push really, really higher, recoup the fleecing effect from the morning session. We have the low and the high core of the range right here. Uh, 57 is the new support zone and 76 is the new trigger for higher. It has tons of resistance into the 80. I would actually stay away from this. Uh, gold decided to come back a little bit. We discussed, uh, we discussed it earlier. If uh, 1510 is not going to hold, we may still have a continuation lower back into the 1505. All right, and now I want to revisit. Uh, I want to revisit natural gas a little bit, if you guys don't mind. I want to take a quick peek at it, and I'm going to replace it right here because uh, I don't want to break my other chart in case we have some setups here. But again, if you're looking for a trade going into lunch, remember the trading room is going to. Uh, I'm going to be off the mic, and I'm not going to sit in front of the computer from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock. I'm off to lunch, going for a walk, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but 240, if you want to take the trade long uh, with a stop at 200, you're going to be looking for a target into the 260. Okay, so you're going to be looking for 20 points. So if you want to do that, you could actually take the trade. It's actually triggering right now, very close to, let's see here, what's this high? There it is. There it is. Uh, yeah, you could actually initiate it here at 35 instead of 40. 35, it's going to be 35 by 200. 35 by 200. You have a 35-point stop, okay? And may want to run to 200. Remember, trades that are setting up in the latter half of the morning session uh, don't really have a lot of momentum. The volume has subsided, and it's, like, super, super slow, okay? All right. Good job, Lynn. All righty. Good job. Awesome. That's what I like to hear. Music to my ears. Music to my ears. I love it when you guys are making money. 
All right, so natural gas, like I said, I really like to uh, uh, see it a little bit from the daily structure here. Um, it's coming in a little bit, it had the gas inventory numbers and it popped a little bit. Now I'm gonna zoom it in on the one hour. Uh, no, I personally didn't take the trade because I'm doing some talking right now, okay? But again, this is the trade parameters, 240. Uh, 240 by 200 and you're looking for a target into the 60 at 60 you take your money and run uh, if you want to go for a break for lunch uh, natural gas is not ready oh bonds you want to take a look at bonds just one second Tim all right uh, bonds let me just check the daily here uh 160 this is back into the support zone from uh from august you can see it right here from august let me just go to the hourly real quick One sixty. You know what? Uh, I'm going to set an alert over 161. Um, if they're going to get back over 161, uh, over this resistance and over this 50 SMA, they become very appealing to me. Okay. And let's go back to oil. So Tim, that's your answer. Okay. Let's check this out. Uh, and in bonds, the daily, uh, the daily is approaching the uh, 50 SMA here and double bottom support from, uh, from August that I just showed you. Tim? Okay. Uh, what else, you guys? Just let me know. Um, the 30 year. That's right, Lynn. So we have a double bottom, a double bottom support. Let me just put it back again. ZB here. This is the 30 year bond and the daily. The daily is really trying to approach this support zone here. This is the bar. This is the support double whammy with uh, 50 SMA, this would be good for a swing. So I'm gonna keep that on my radar. All right, good job for taking YM. Beautiful, Mark, beautiful. All right, um, what else do you guys wanna talk about? What else do you guys wanna talk about? <laughs> pre <laughs> or margaritas okay no i don't lynn i don't use the 30 year or anything else in reference to the indices i trade the indices as uh, as they uh set up and uh i i do a lot of pre-planning uh for the indices i evaluate i also evaluate the stocks that are under the index Mm hmm. All right. So, yeah. So I'm going to share with you guys. If you want to join the trading room, uh, you could just click on the trading room and you can read all about it. This is what we're doing here. So we're day trading futures and we're swing trading futures and stocks. Uh, we are not initiating any stocks at this point because uh, of the choppiness in the market. And also next week, we're going to be very cautious uh, uh, into lagging into uh, swings, longer term swings, because next week we have the Fed decision. Uh, we don't know if, uh, if don't, first of all, we don't know if they're going to cut rates. We don't know how much they're going to be cutting. Is it going to be quarter percent? It's going to be half a percent. I mean, nobody knows. That's going to be the element of surprise. And that is going to create a lot of volatility for price. 
lots and lots of volatility for price. And uh, I don't want to be caught in that. Uh, we're going to try to, and by the way, XLF is really projecting higher, uh, very nice price action. FCX guys, for those of you that are in the room, so we have some ongoing trends. We're just managing the, trend, the trades at this point. We're not initiating new trades today. Uh, we had one trade that we initiated the other day, and that was Boeing. And our entry was 366. Believe it or not, we locked in some profit into Boeing below 300. And we have still one little itty bitty lot for an investment purpose. So for our investing, uh, uh, investing traders, so traders that want to hold trades beyond earnings and beyond anything else. So uh, it was a fabulous move. Talk about instant gratification. Uh, it was a fantastic move for us that generated so much profit. We don't need to push uh, and force the note when we don't need to. So if you guys uh, want to sign up, uh, we day trade futures and we swing trade futures and stocks. Uh, obviously, indices, commodities, like I said, we just exited uh, yesterday a trade in the Dow. We booked profits. We knew that ECB is coming. We had no idea how the market is going to react on that news. We didn't want to have any kind of surprises. We locked into those highs, so we're good with that. So if you want to read more details, basically this is what we do. From nine o'clock to 9.30, we do the pre-market game plan. I open the room at nine o'clock. I start typing in the major, economics, uh, uh, major uh, economic events for the day. I type in any news announcements that were in the overnight trading session, if we had any. Uh, any earnings uh, that are uh, before the market open or after the market closes. Uh, any other earnings that are going to influence the price. Now, remember, we're about a week or so away from a brand new earnings season. So that is going to be fantastic because uh, earnings is what powers the futures indices. Uh, close to 9.15, I'm uh, on the mic and uh, I do the pre-market game plan, uh, map out the levels and uh, in the futures indices and golden oil, and we're pretty much ready for the open. And we're waiting patiently for, uh, for a trade to set up. Now, not every day I am so talkative on the mic. Right now, I had to be on the mic to answer all your questions, but when we're in the trading room, basically I'm off the mic uh, when uh, the market is not doing anything and I'm coming back on the mic when, uh, when trades are setting up. So it's gonna be maximum focus on my side because I can't talk, explain, answer questions, talk about the market. Somebody's asking about you know, a symbol or what have you. So it's 100% undivided attention to the market. I come on the mic only to call a trade, exact parameters like we did in the trading session today uh, with entry stops, targets, and I managed a trade for you. Okay, and I'm, t uh, I'm telling you exactly what I'm doing. But of course you can uh, individualize your own trade. So let's say if I get in a trade in NASDAQ, of course you can, uh, because they're pretty much in sync uh, you know, you could trade. Uh, you could trade the same concept with the mini S and P or Russell, or if you want to trade it with uh, YM with the Dow. From twelve o'clock to two o'clock, we're on a break. I'm not in front of the computer, so I'm not answering any kind of questions. I take off, uh, and I'm coming back into the market at two o'clock to four o'clock, where we basically do a little bit of update of what happened uh, in the morning session, and uh, we're getting ready for the PM session. Uh, in the PM session, if the market is sideways, likely we're not going to have any day trades, but if the trading session is setting up uh, a little bit more active with a little bit more volume, then we're going to look to initiate some trades. Now, in the latter half of earnings season, when volume is really slowed down and there are not as many companies that are due to report earnings after the close, the momentum is lacking. So there's not going to be a lot of activity. Uh, we basically use the afternoon hours, you know, to explain, to answer questions. I do a lot of mentoring within that time, uh, little mini lectures, and we, I use that time to actually scan through the stocks, update, uh, lift some stops up and some swing trades and come up with some new trading opportunities for the next day for stocks. Uh, we take one to three trades a day. Today was a very active trade. That's because we had one winner, one loser, and one winner again. It was uh, I'm always fighting back to um, I'm fighting back to get my money back from the market. 
uh, and we focus only on high quality trades uh, not, uh, of quality and not quantity of the number of trades per day will depend on the market conditions. If we have a dormant market, then we're not going to be uh, calling any kind of trades. We had days and days where we didn't call any kind of trades. We were here, we were talking about the market, we were talking about anything else market related, but we were not taking trades because the environment was not right for our methodology. We have precise entries, uh, precise entries, stops, and targets, uh, and also uh, we provide the management, but you're free, this is the way I trade, but you're free to trade your own way. Uh, we have a private uh, feed for the overnight trading session. If we are in swing trades in the overnight trading session, I typically look at, uh, look at the charts at 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and I update you guys so you're not just going to wander around, okay, what the heck am I going to do with this trade overnight? I'm stuck in it. I don't know what to do. I can't get a hold of Anka. To do, what is she doing? What are her thoughts? And you guys have access to me. A lot of members are messaging me back, uh, and I accept messages between 9 o'clock and uh, uh, 1030. And around that time frame, when I look at charts, you guys can ask me a plethora of questions. I get back to you. Uh, and these are private messages. We have a private feed for the overnight trading session. And then I go to bed. So at 11 o'clock, done. I raise my stops. I put my, you know, um, um, I set my trades, either profit target, et cetera. And then I go to bed. I don't worry. I don't wake up at night wondering where my, where my price is. Uh, we have... Um, a real-time portfolio performance is on our website. I'm gonna show you guys where to find that with all the trades. Uh, actually, all the trades that were in today's trading room called, you're gonna see them into our portfolio. Uh, you, we have a risk calculator and, for futures and one for stocks that are gonna help you position size. Uh, we provide, uh, uh, so the risk chart for futures as well. Uh, professional platform layout, if you guys uh, want to open an account with, uh, or if you don't want to open an account, but just want to have a carbon copy, we provide you with my platform layout, depending on the number of monitors that you have, I can adjust it for you. Um, we have, uh, we provide our traders with day trading and swing trading guidelines. There are a couple of pages, actually a few pages there that you can browse through. So you, uh, uh, understand the terminology. So you understand what is, uh, if I mention a trade and say, Hey, you have to place the stop under 300, you know, what under 300 means, you know, how many points under 300 I'm referring to. Um, also, or above, let's say 400, just giving you some ideas. Uh, also for day trading and swing trading for stocks and for futures, they're, uh, they apply the same. Uh, you're gonna receive real-time answers to all your trading questions, just like you have here uh, into the trading room today. Uh, like I said, throughout, uh, throughout the week, uh, we're doing lectures and mentoring. So we're doing a lot of that because I like, to, I like you guys to be educated and I want you guys to understand uh, why I'm taking the trade, the reason why I'm taking the trade and what I'm looking for in that specific trade. Uh, all and uh, you guys that are joining the room, uh, you will have access to member only classes. And we sometimes do that. We had a, a class on soft stops. Uh, we had a class on, um, and especially now in the third quarter, we have a class that we're offering and that is an $899 class. And uh, we're offering for our trading room members for free. And it is a class on how to trade the year end. And basically uh, teaches you how to trade window dressing, January effect. Uh, um, it teaches you how to trade. Uh, um, um, oh, okay. I need a break. <laughs> Holiday. Okay, here it is. Christmas rally, okay? Christmas rally teaches you how, what to look for, what to trade, what stocks to be in, et cetera, et cetera, and what to look for at the indices. And we have live screen share from nine o'clock till 4 p.m. Eastern. We focus on the futurist uh, m and &E indices, but we also make called trades in the bonds and uh, oil and gold, silver, natural gas and copper, and some other commodities. Like I said, uh, I think that uh, grains are in for a move. All right, these are some of the trading strategies uh, that, uh, that we apply to our day trading and swing trading. If you guys wanna join, this is it. Our last open house was June 6th. We will be, uh, we will be updating 
uh, uh, we will be updating actually the screen with the latest uh, trading room up in a house that we have hosted today. Uh, it is perfect, William, for smaller accounts. It's perfect, um, uh, William, perfect for small accounts. You could trade with micros. You could trade with micros. A lot of the traders, and even uh, I do sometimes, uh, when we have high volatility, we actually go into the micros and we position size for that. Uh, because we do offer these open houses from time to time, actually now we have offered, th we have offered them quarterly, we don't offer any free trials because there's a reason for that. You know, we don't want, we try to alleviate the program hoppers because I don't have the time to dedicate, uh, you know, to all individuals that come in, stay here for, uh, you know, five days and they go like, oh yeah, this is not for me or this is for me or whatever. So you're either, you either want to learn how to trade or you're committed or you're a program hopper. So we try to alleviate that. So this is it, you could go here. Uh, these are some of the reviews and these are from verified clients. So clients that are into and members that are actually members verified by our system, not whatever's floating out there because there are a lot of uh, individuals that are uh, doing a lot of harm. So uh, the other thing that I wanted to share with you is the portfolio results, where to find the portfolio results. 2017 is here, 2018 is here, and this is 2019. You just click on here and you have the full, uh, the, all the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, we share everything, February, March, April, June, July, and we uh, try to update this. Uh, we, we try to update this every month. So at the end of the month, we update it. The reason why you're not ha seeing the September results is because sometimes we are in ongoing trades and we don't want to share the ongoing trades that we're in with, uh, uh, with uh, traders that are not into their program because it's not fair. We have members that are paying for the program to benefit from uh, the trades that are in. And if I advertise them here for free, we wouldn't make any sense for it, okay? So the other thing uh, that we have, uh, the other thing that we have is that if you are a very uh, busy trader and maybe you don't have the time to trade your own, uh, your own account, we do have a program and we work with uh, uh, SRB Capital. Herb is here into the trading room and, uh, 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 and uh, he can provide more information on it. We have an auto trading program. Uh, we do not take high volatility trades with this. We take very conservative trades uh, uh, using this program. And uh, if you would like to learn more information about it, you can enter your name, email, and phone number right here. And uh, Herb is going, Herb is our dedicated specialist and he's executing all the trades. And uh, he's going to get, uh, he's going to get you in and out of trades and uh, try to carbon copy uh, the trading room to the best, obviously, to, to, he's going to do, a, he is doing a great job. Uh, but remember, not all trades that are in the trading room will be, uh, uh, will be uh, taken into the auto trading program. Um, because we do not take uh, trade high volatility trades. Okay, not high volatility trades because those have a high, high, high degree of risk. So all everything is uh, everything is automated. This hundred this is hundred percent automated trading system um, uh, for the U.S. futures market. Uh, we um, you could use futures to diversify your portfolio. We trade a variety of strategies. You save time and effort. So basically, you don't have to do anything, and you're getting uh, you're getting uh, a statement at the end of the day with what we did in, what we did with your account. Uh, all right, so this is all for this. Uh, all right, so let me just close this and uh, let me answer some questions. Uh, think or swim offers micros. Yes, Williams, the think or swim offers micros. Do grains have micros? No, I'm not aware of grains having micros, April. Uh, William, I think I answered this question. Is it good for smaller accounts? It's perfect because you could trade 
you could have a $500 account or let's say $5,000 account or whatever account you have $3,000 account and you could still position size and use about a hundred dollar risk uh, uh, for each trade and you can position size. And obviously, uh, you know, as uh, a member of the trading room, you are, uh, I provide you with a guideline of how to position size for that. Okay. Uh, Daniel, Daniel, you can uh, contact Herb. Herb, if you don't mind, if you can uh, put in your email address right here, or Daniel, please go to, uh, please go to our website and fill in that information, and somebody's going to get back to you on that. Um, does yes, Tom, it does. Daniel, okay. Uh, Ted, do you carry futures trades overnight? Yes, we do. Uh, when we have an environment for that, we do. And in fact, the proof was in the pudding. Uh, on Monday, we initiated a trade. Let me share with you the trade. Let me see. All right, let me see where we are right here. Let me show you the uh, our portfolio. Okay, here we go. Oops, I don't know why this, Okay, here we go. Do you guys see it? Do you guys see the screen? Okay, so these are our September trades. Obviously, today's trades are not input yet because I wait for lunchtime to do that. But we only took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trades. Eight trades this, uh, this month. Just eight trades this month. And we're September 12th. And today we took three trades. So these three trades are going to be updated um, um, by me. Uh, at the end of the trading session or into lunch. And uh, uh, we did carry the trade. We had a YM swing. You can see it right here. Uh, at 26,900, we initiated the trade. And we added, and the drop, we added at 840, so we get a better average. And we had a really good average. And we trailed out yesterday at 27,040 because it was right ahead. Uh, it was right into lunch where uh, where the market was becoming very sideways and very tired at that point. All right. Thank you so much, guys. And this is all for the morning session. I'll see you at two o'clock. Hope I answered the majority of your questions. And if you have any further questions, please uh, stay tuned. Uh, uh, we will be, I will be back on the mic at two o'clock. So enjoy your lunch and I, see, uh, I will see you at two o'clock. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the PM session. My name is Anka Metcalf, and it is 2.01 uh, p.m. Eastern, uh, 9.12.19, and uh, let's continue with the uh, afternoon trading session. All right, so for today's uh, afternoon trading session, we will be reviewing the market. We will be looking for some uh, trading opportunities, and uh, we will also be discussing uh, and we will talk a little bit about our class. We had a lot of inquiries about our upcoming class that is scheduled for next week. Uh, the class is scheduled 16th through the 20th, and uh, then we're going to have another special session. So we're going to be getting together again on Monday. This is a new day that I have added to our class and this is called the lab implementation so we will be discussing how to put everything together at large and uh, in one session also the class is followed by a 30-day trading lab you will be trading with me live 30 days uh, in the same environment that you see here and uh, I'm gonna be speaking more about this class but um, first off let's talk about the market and then if the market is slow if there are not any opportunities in the market then we will go ahead and uh, uh, tackle the futures trading class and then if you guys have any other questions um, feel free to ask in the room uh, and also uh, please keep it professional and uh, just let's discuss market okay so uh, let's begin with the Dow. Dow uh, has uh, a very uh, strong chart structure compared to NASDAQ. NASDAQ, uh, even though it has been more advanced in the session, uh, it lacks momentum and it lacks uh, that pattern formation. 
Uh, Russell is a little bit weaker today. In fact, uh, it is the relative weak index for today. As you can see right now, I consider three points pretty flat compared to the moves that it can potentially make. Uh, let's discuss at large. Let me just bring the big charts up and we're going to be discussing each index with the new areas to watch. And also we're going to be looking at gold and oil. All right. And then after this, if you guys have any special interest in some stocks, please uh, give me your ticker symbol and I'm happy to look over, uh, over your uh, over your stocks and give you my take uh, on these stocks. So uh, we have a high of 320, okay? So we have an overnight high following the news that came in at seven o'clock into the 27, 320. And this was a tweet right here. President Trump tweeted and the market just reacted to the tweet uh, and pushed higher. This is a bull flag or it is a range. So we have strong support level into the 150. We were looking at this into uh, the pre-market, uh, into the pre-market session. And we've determined that this 150 level has very high odds of holding. And we can see that there was a lot of balancing here. So we had first, it, first we had the ECB announcement then we had the news that came out in regards to the tariffs, right? Then we had the zip back down within the same hour. And then we had a retest based on the very strong formation, on the very strong structure, support held, and the price started to continue higher. In the lunchtime achieving the prior high from the overnight trading session of 310. Now, please keep in mind that from 2 o'clock to about 2.15 or 2, 2.30, it's also called the fleecing time, the shakeout time, actually. I call it the shakeout time. Everything's going to shake and bake until it sets up, either for a rip or for a dip. The key location is still uh, moving forward. It's still going to be into the 2.50 and back into the 2.40s. So you can see that it has a really thin layer of support to 40 to 250. So if we get a pullback into the 240, we can look for other short-term trades. And that is short-term trades. That's because the support level is very thin. If we would have a much steeper pullback into the 200 or so, then we would be looking for a higher target back into the high of the day. And even if we get the pullback into the 40 or 50, we're still going to be looking for the high of the day. But first off, we're going to be looking for that 300 area that was set into this lunch period. And then we're going to be looking for the 320 area. If we break below the 150 level, I am not interested in shorting. That's because I am a trend trader and I'm not a gambler, okay? Gamblers can take both sides of the trade. But all in all, trust me, you're not going to get far ahead doing that because you have to follow the price velocity. I don't know many successful traders that actually have quit their jobs in order to trade this strategy. Going long, going short, going low. Ooh, I'm going to catch a knife here. Oh, I think I have the top. I'm going to short the top right here. Trust me, those individuals, they're still at work while we're trading from home. So bottom line is that we need to see this 240 area hold. If we have this area hold through 230, then we can look for a progression back into the highs and we can look for extension even into the 400. So it's about 100 points from that 300 level. So I think that's pretty impressive. The current structure that we have in the Imini Dow for me and for my personal taste is the best looking pattern. Best looking pattern. Now at two o'clock, we just started forming the last hour candle. And at one o'clock, we started, guess what? We started the brand new fresh four hour candle, okay? 
if we're gonna start trading above 300, 300 is gonna do the trick here. So over 300, I'm gonna mark it actually here, okay? So over 300, this is gonna be incredibly bullish, incredibly bullish, that may extend into the all-time highs, okay? May extend into the all-time highs. The all-time highs are set at 397. There is a projection into the 400, which is three points away. So this would be a very good risk to reward ratio should we have a pullback into that 50 or 40 zone for an extension higher. So this is what we're gonna be looking for. And possibly we would look for an extension beyond that. So beyond the 400 level. And that extension is into the 510 for a possible swing. Shirley, I have chosen, and Shirley, please post so everybody can see your question. Shirley is asking, why did you choose YM today? Because for me, it had the best risk to reward ratio. It was setting up better than the other indices in terms of risk to reward ratio. Plus, it had, the, it had a minimum risk compared to the m and S&P or NASDAQ. Those are, uh, those are the three reasons why I chose why. And I'm going to walk you through. So this is basically what I'm doing right now, and I'm explaining why I chose YM and why I'm continuing to select YM moving forward. Okay, and then I'm going to show you a chart from NASDAQ. They're not all created equal. Okay, when you're trading indices, I go for the relative strength index because it may have the power to propel higher faster than its pairs. So when I'm looking at the daily structure, I'm looking at the areas of resistance. And if I have resistance or pressure points that are distance from my trigger point, it means that price may have the velocity to be absorbed faster, quicker into that cone of resistance. So the four hour is shaping up at the bull flag and it should. And over, like I said, over 300, uh, 300 304, 3010, this can be seen as a possible swing. Now, because we have not set a new support zone based on the four hour, obviously, if you want to initiate this trade, you would have to have a stop around the 100 area. You can use micros. And again, you can use micros very well. You'd have tons of stops, to, uh, tons of room for the stops, not tons of stops, but you have tons of room for the stops. So for instance, if you want to risk, if you have a 200 point, 200 point stop, for instance, like in this example, and if you only want to risk, you have a really tiny trading account and you have position size, let's say for a hundred bucks, you could take it with two contracts, two micro contracts, M, Y, M. For the possibility and the potential to get it back into the 27,400 and back into the 27,500. So you would risk a hundred dollars, but you're looking at a projected target of $200. If you're using micros, and like I said, if you're position sizing for a hundred dollars. Okay. All right. So let's get to the 15 minute. 15 minute. Look how hawkish the price action was today. A lot of traders have lost their shirts in today's trading session. A lot were long, short, long, short at the wrong times. Um, it is very hard to determine whenever you're having these fleecing effect. And I know a lot of traders do not use hard stops. Uh, and it's really, uh, uh, this this thing with the hard stop it, it's a double sided sword you can use the hard stop uh sp do i like to use four hour and one hour for levels 100 percent sp yes i do i do uh for levels i used uh i use multi time frame and i transferred the congestion areas into pressure points which is this one the 27 100 so this is not only a layer of support, let's say from one hour or four hour, these are accumulated support levels or multiple time frames uh, that are matched into the same location. They're pretty, pretty exact, the 151. So moving forward, what, we, what can we expect for the afternoon trading session? 
Well, we are range bound. And you can see that starting with the overnight trading session, we did set somewhat of support into the 150 and we do have resistance into the 300. So we're trading in a range of about 150 points. While trading in a range, remember a lot of traders are looking to short into this area. And it seems very appealing because if you were trading seven, 10 years ago, any book out there would tell you that, hey, you would sh you short into resistance, you never buy into resistance. This is not the case because in, in, uh, uh, with the presence of algorithms and the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the number of high algorithmic trading, there's a lot of buying into resistance. Algos are uh, working here at the, uh, working here like a, a, have a double facet here. So they have a little range of about 20 points or so. And if they break above those 20 points into that range that is developing uh, on any kind of time frame, um, they're going to break out higher. Okay. They're going to break out higher. That's, it's all about clusters. That's those small clusters. And even into the lunchtime period, like I, I mentioned, that there is a trade opportunity into the Dow. And let's go to the five minute. I mentioned that there's a trade opportunity into the Dow, 27,240 by 27, uh, uh, 20, uh, 27, 210 or 27, 27, 100. 100 would actually, I did mention the 100 level and in this, because we really didn't want to, we don't want to choke it. And I said that there's a max target into the uh, 27, 260. And I said, take your money and run. Right? Did I say that, guys? Before going into lunch. It achieved the target and then it started floating around before breaking out higher. Now, remember that, and I presented this concept, right? And I said, listen, guys, resistance. There's a fine cluster of about 25 points into it. And this, the reason why I'm telling you guys this is because I am fortunate enough to have a friend that's, that's uh, uh, literally uh, um, programming algos. So the algo, basically what we're trading, uh, what we're trading in 2019 and what we have been trading in 2018 is we're trading news and we're trading algos. This is all there is. Very little, re very little interaction from retail traders or even from manual trading. So 15%. Uh, fifteen percent is actually hedge fund execution uh, execution of, of trades, funds, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but the reality is that the majority is electronically executed. Okay, and this is not a bad thing because the simplicity of our method of trading keeps us on the right side of the trade. Okay, keeps us on the right side of the trade. So what we can what can we expect from the Dow moving forward? And we're going to go index by index. This prior resistance high now becomes support for price. So 2750 to 2760 is going to be a critical area. So we need to hold this zone. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a little alert. Why do I create this alert? You're going to ask. Well, I set a lot. Uh, I set a lot of alerts up because if I'm answering questions or if I get distracted with a stock. I hear my phone blip or my platform, and then I'm automatically looking at the screen and I'm seeing my alert, so I know to take action. So, so far we have a brand new range that is developing 260 to 300, which is about 40 points, right? 40 points. Can you buy the support and sell the top? Of course, you can try that. But like I said, if you try to do this, you're gonna risk one R on, or one risk unit on every single trade. The end result is that when you're going for, uh, when, you're, when you're scalping, you're going for one reward to each risk applied. And these tight stops that you call them, that can be anywhere from 10 points to about 25 points, sometimes even to 35 points. And if you're wrong most of the time, because the, the, the reward is so, asymmetric compared to the risk that you're applying, you may be accumulating more losses than you are making money, than rewards. And that may represent a problem. For that reason, I wait for confirmation in price. So I'm waiting for specific formations that are happening on chart patterns 
that may that are going to provide me the clues as to the as to the next market reaction and i watch price action i watch momentum i try to see if the volume is increasing or decreasing at each and every single level and at each point in time so what can we expect for the afternoon trading session uh if we break over 300 we're gonna zip higher uh, like I said before, 300, 320, uh, I'm sorry, 320, uh, 320 for a first target. And then we're going to start moving uh, way higher, 350 and 400. And even beyond that, if we break below 250, so not 260 where I have my alert, but if we break below 250, it means that the price needs to, needs to find its new support zone. And sometime this happens. It's kind of like a price afternoon price discovery for the new bounce that is going to happen probably into uh, the latter part of the day. Okay. So that may be, uh, that may be, uh, that may be the case. All right. So basically we're looking at this cluster right here. We break above, we're going to continue higher. We break below, we're going to sit and wait because we have a lot of uh, support underneath. Uh, the other thing that we have Okay. The other thing that we have and we recognize and the number one reason why I do not short is because we're trading above the 10 a.m. Okay. This is the 10 a.m. high. So this level right here is going to be tons of support for price action that is trading beyond 10 o'clock. All right. So we're going to be looking at the 10 a.m. highs as a possible support zone, right? And a bounce area. The reason why I'm not shorting is because I don't know if this is the high. I don't know if this is the high. I mean, who knows? Does any, is anybody in here uh, know how to read, uh, how to capture the highs or the lows? If they tell you that, hey, I shorted the highs and I got out at the lows or I bought the lows and I got out at the highs, they're lying. Straight out, they're lying. Okay? Because there's no way on determining what the high is or what the low is. As a trader and as a trend trader, and trade trading has kept me safe, there are some counter trend traders out there. Trust me, they're making pennies. They're not going for high velocity trades because they don't have confidence in their trades because their trades are not generating the, the proper profit and they're wasting their time and money. So for me, it is really important to evaluate and to capture a portion of that swing. So I like to get into the sweet spot of that, uh, of that, uh, of that area. Sometimes I could go aggressively in, sometimes, but sometimes I just try to stay away and, uh, and try to determine the trend and try to determine the, uh, the, uh, the higher velocity move, but with a safer entry. There are traders that love to trade on their own. They love to, you know, uh, and they never have stops. They never have stops. And, and it could go against them. It could go against them and they're going to go like, oh, okay, I'm going to add some more or I'm going to add some more. Okay. That's not a good recipe. Um, Lou, that's a great question. Are these strictly intraday parameters or swing trade parameters? They can be used for both. And it determines then how the structure is positioned and where the price is in relation to the current structure. That's an excellent question. Because if you're looking at smaller time frames, for instance, in this five minute time range, you're gonna be looking for a shorter term, a shorter term trades. If you're expanding to a little bit higher time frames, you're going to see that it's not a great idea to entry long here at 260 and have that tight stop of about 10 points to let's say maybe 30 points or 35 points. Why? Let me show you. If I go now to a higher time frame and I say, hey, you know what? I want to buy it here and I want to, I want it the, I, I want the, I want to capture a low into the 260 and I want to take the price back into the 300. Listen, it may happen. 
But the chart is telling you something else because when you go to the multi time frame analysis, you can easily see that, yeah, it is a strong area of support deriving from this prior pivot low right here from the overnight trade, uh, uh, from the overnight price action. But at the same time, you cannot ignore the fact that this is this candle has a high and this candle has a low. And if it breaks below the low, it has the potential to fill some of this void underneath. Now, because we're still uh, now, because we're still in a very strong uptrend here. Right. Very strong uptrend. There's a strong possibility that this candle that is forming right now may not come all the way down from which we can buy it and take it up. You see what I'm saying? So there is the possibility that at that price point, okay, at this price point, the candle may come in just a little bit further and then take off. And this is usually happening in the afternoon trading session. These are gonna be the new parameters. Your stop definitely has to be below this low. Your entry is going to be obviously this breakout. Okay, obviously this breakout. And uh, because the trade is set onto a one hour time frame, you could actually consider it for a swing. Okay, for a swing for higher. Oops, that's about weird. <laughs> Okay, but now we have to see what the one hour is telling us. Is it going to hold that 60 to 50 level for smaller time frames, or is it going to uh, uh, is is it is it going to drip a little bit uh, a little bit more? Uh, let's take a quick look and let's see uh, how the mini &E SMP is shaping up because. One of the questions was what what drew me to the uh, to the mini Dow, and for the last three weeks, it was the fact that it was offering less risk. It was offering less risk per trade. Who doesn't like re less risk per trade? You might hear a lot of people, you know, uh, you know, mention the fact that hey, you know what? I made five thousand dollars in this trade, or I captured the high, or almost the high, and I covered that the low, and I'm gonna buy the low. I'm gonna go back to the high. Very brave, very brave. Ask them one question: What is your risk? What are you willing to risk on this trade? Give me an exact risk amount that you're using for this trade, what is your stop? If the trader is not coming up with an answer to that question, step away, just step away, okay? Because that's like knife catching, that's like gambling, it's like, you know, when you go to those Chinese uh, uh, shows, you know, at the theater and you see those sticks and those plates that they're like moving around, it's just circus. Okay, it's just circus. All right, let's talk about the M and &E SMPs trading into. Remember, we are trading in all our patterns. We're trading, and even the Dow, we're trading into all time into all time high resistance. I was gonna say, yeah, it's not all time high, but it is. It's all time high resistance. This resistance is going to gyrate. It's going to make the price gyrate. It's very very jittery. The fact that the price has recovered, and again, we're right on track with, uh, uh, with historic data, historic data that is showing us that pre-election years are bullish and pullback buys, buying the dip is gonna, and this is not all, guys, the buying the dip did not, was not invented last year. It was not invented this year. Social media is just, just magnifying this whole thing. This has always been the case. It has always been the case. In, 2000 and, uh, in 2008, when the market was dropping, that was the best buy the dip opportunity. And as scary as it was that time around, guys, it was just a pullback. It was just a pullback. It was not something major, not something scary. It lasted for a long time because it lasted for almost a year. But then things quickly turn around. And it was so, I mean, all these dips are, are, are providing traders with tons of trading opportunities. I remember that I took a lot of 
traits with, uh, with, in that era, some of the traits I still hold to this very day because they're long, long, long-term investments. I'm going to share one of them with you, but some of them I sold. Some of them I sold and then I started swing trading and then actively, you know, uh, actively investing around them, but I still have them in my long term portfolio. And again, um, not next week, but the other week we're going to have, uh, we're going to have a, a webinar. I haven't done a webinar uh, for, for swing trading stocks in forever. We have a swing trading class uh, that is out of this world because it's, so it's one of my favorite classes that I teach, actually. I love the futures class, obviously, because this is what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, right? But the swing trading class, it's nothing that you have seen any, uh, anywhere out there. It teaches you not only the everything about swing trading and how to actively invest, but it teaches you, uh, it teaches you how to scam how to find trades, which is, I think, the most important thing and how to benefit from market tempo, how to benefit from these dips in the market and what to look for precisely, okay? So we're trading into all-time highs in the m and &E and which is very challenging because the price is going to, um, uh, the price is definitely going to feel um, the pressure from, those, from these all-time highs here. And usually the price stalls before pushing forward. If there would be a piece uh, or an economic release that would come out today or tomorrow, you would see these, uh, these uh, all-time highs just blown away. And we would have a brand new all-time high uh, on, uh, on our charts. But it's very important for news to contribute to that because if we do that, uh, that is the only, uh, I mean, that is the only way where the price is literally going to push, push through that resistance. And uh, let me check the economic releases for tomorrow and uh, get you guys ready and see what we can expect. All right. So tomorrow we have core retail sales and retail sales. They're both coming in at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. And at 10 o'clock, we have preliminary University of Michigan consumer sentiment, which is very important. It's going to create some hawkish price action along with the 8.30 release. And uh, that is going to uh, probably have an influence on this high and may propel the price higher, okay, in that case. We only have about, from, this, from the high today, we just, we don't have much, right? So the high, uh, today's high, 2175, let's say 22, and the high is 29, right? 29 and a half. So it has very few points to achieve target. All right, so let's talk about the game plan from the hourly. Okay, so I always like to do multi time frame, multi -time frame analysis. Yes, April. So basically, we have a brand new fresh high compared to the overnight high into the mini SP, right? So this compared to YM, let's go back to YM. Does YM have a new all-time high? So all, you always have to go back and forth. No, because the all-time high was established here, okay? So m and &E SMP has a little bit more relative strength than the uh, m and &E Dow because it managed to push through the overnight high, okay? Now, let's take it to a smaller time frame to get back into our day trading environment here. And let's take it to the five minutes. All right, the five minute, if the trade trades over 3018, this is gonna probably uh, uh, be on the launch pad for the 320 again. So it's creating a mini cluster, but the mini cluster is coming into a very shallow, uh, very shallow area of minor support. So if you would like to take this trade, I still have not finished my analysis, but this is a trade idea for the trading room, uh, 30, 18, uh, 3019 actually is the trigger, 39, 3019 with a potential to run to the 3020, 3021. It's going to have a little bit of an inverse, uh, inverse um, asymmetric risk because the risk is at 3015. That is your risk for this trade. And obviously you're gonna be looking for a continuation higher beyond 3021 and that is going to be into uh uh into the all-time high of 3029 okay in fact this is a really great really great trade idea 
All right, so NASDAQ. Okay, uh, I'm doing a lot of demonstration today. Usually when we are in the trading room at this time around, I don't really talk, but I'm off the mic and I'm stocking for trades. So I'm, what I'm doing right now is I wanna walk you through, through every trace, my thought process. To, so you have confidence when you're trading. So to match what you're seeing on charts matches what I'm seeing on charts. And it means that we're trading on the right side of the trade. Does that make sense? All right, uh, NASDAQ has been the most choppiest trading patterns of all today. Choppy, 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 okay? So there was a trigger that happened, this uh, green candle, the trigger came here at seven o'clock and it came at 79.20 with a very small risk of about 20 points. So this was a gift here for uh, actually for uh, the trader that initiated this trade, okay? Uh, very nice, a uh, very nice rotation. It had the bottom lifted from that minor support zone from the prior highs right here that uh, have been consolidated since last Thursday, if you recall. We have been consolidating Thursday, Friday, and then Monday, then the dip, et cetera, et cetera. We were never bearish on this. We made our money to the long side. All right, we're going again for higher velocity moves. So we're getting a lot of a, a lot of lifts. You can see them right here. So a lot of bottoming tells. This is a suggestion that institutions are getting in, algos are getting in because algos are the institutions. They're executing on behalf of institutions. So they're just lifting the price, lifting the price. I'm a little bit concerned about the doji because, and we triggered the rotation to the downside below 46. In fact, we did type in a 45 here, so that's a little bit concerning to me. It means that the price may not be ready for either side of the tape because it's still trading into resistance all the way into the 60. If it clears the 60, then I, then I could be looking for a possibility of a continuation higher back into the 76, and uh, your risk for this trade is actually going to be the slow into the 40s. Uh, the four hour chart in this, uh, still the doji right here. So until it breaks out or break, breaks down, uh, it's not committed on either side of the tape. So it may be wishy-washy going into the afternoon trading session. Although it's the most advanced index with uh, 0.82%, it has the sloppiest and the ugliest pattern ever, okay? Slow down in, in momentum, uh, low volume, et cetera, et cetera. So again, 15 minute is ranging. If it trades over 60, I think that uh, we, may be getting, uh, we may be getting ready for a lift higher, but it really needs to trade over 60. Over 60, this could be a signal for long. Uh, and the stop, again, is gonna be a little bit asymmetric. Like I said, you gotta have it into the 30. You can train micros with it, not, not really high odds. Russell, uh, Russell he has been on a rampage here, pushing higher. If Russell is going to get, hold on, I'm just getting the wrong drawing tool here. Okay, let me just get my cursor back. Russell needs to get over 1580. If Russell's going to get it over 1580, it's going to rip to 1590. No questions asked. Uh, the risk uh, at the time of the trigger can be considered into, uh, into the 5170 or 5171. All right. Let's take it to some commodities here and let's take a, a quick look at gold. These are some levels that I have pre-planned before the uh, trading room has opened. Uh, we had a support in the overnight trading session coinciding. So this is a triple, uh, this was actually, it was actually, uh, it was actually a super strong confluence zone. It had four elements of support into the same location at the 1497 from which it propelled higher into resistance uh and again it was a coil around the 1500 it was a coil around the 1500 level so you can see that 1500 is the common denominator uh for the last three trading days what's today today's uh, uh today's thursday okay wow when did this week fly already Okay, so we had uh, we had the price elevated into the 1530. Uh, it also hit our uh, ex almost the exact parameter. So it went to actually a point and a half higher than our parameter. And then it started to sell. And it was basing for the longest time here for a couple of hours. It was basing at the 1512 before it gave up some profits. And now it's trying to reestablish support into the 1500. 
I still think that it has a lot to work before it actually starts ascending or descending at this point. The pattern, this pattern is pretty bearish. It had hit resistance and it did the four hour rotation. Right now it's trading into minor support zone. So there's, there's some confluence here into the 1500. So if you're, you know, if you're looking for a really, if you're on the very aggressive side, you can look to buy here in the 15, uh, 1505 or 1506 and look for price projection into 1510 and back into this line of 1513. If it escapes 1513, it's going to zip back up probably to 15, 20, 20 and 25. All right, let's get to gold here. Gold, uh, I'm sorry, oil. I posted a trading idea a little bit earlier here. And I said that if it gets the lift above the 1535, 1536, you can look for a short squeeze back into the $56 or back into the 5620 or 5650. So you're going to get this projection for uh for higher um i think the price is so wishy-washy right here very 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 wishy-washy so actually the this trade that uh this trade that happened the trigger point was right here into the 5610 and it actually triggered at one o'clock in the morning okay so we were all sleeping so again this was a trade for uh, the overnight traders for uh, for the European traders, and this took the price lower back. And basically, the target for these trade for this trade was into the fifty four eighty and fifty four fifty. Okay, fifty four eighty to fifty four fifty, and then it's trying to rotate a little bit here. Uh, let's just check the four hour. Uh, yeah, four hours coinciding as well. It has a lot of elements against it, so. Um, it has uh, the green line, Armon is the 50 simple moving average. The green line right here is the 50 simple moving average. So uh, it has, it, it's basically trading under all these oscillating uh, resistance zones. Okay. All right. So we have the price resistance into, all right. Uh oh, we're missing stuff here. All right. Let's get to, let's get a little bit to work here. Uh, so NASDAQ is a trade idea. If you want to take a 79.60 by, uh, you could you could use a stop of 79.40 versus uh, seven, versus 30 that I mentioned before. This is the first break in the Dow. Uh, William, I do look at it. I look at it from for from higher uh, a higher trading perspective. We are a little bit into oversold in all the indices. We are definitely into oversold in um uh, you know uh, with the William percent R uh even on the daily but remember that we can stay extended uh extended periods of time and the market can still grind up as long as it's trading well above that 20. All right, Angelus, I'm just going to pull the chart real quick. I was just watching to see if we can have an entry here. So I think it's more important to um, for you to understand. Okay, here it is. All right, so basically when it's trading above the 20, it's a little bit, it, this is the 20 right here. It's trading into an extended period, but note the time here. So this is a daily chart. Note the time for the whole duration of June until almost the end of June right here, it, it stayed into the oversold area. Now we have just entered this area this month, okay? We had a little bit of a topping here into, uh, into late August and we were just trading into this area, okay? We're just trading above this area. So remember, we can still stay in this area for a, a bit longer. Okay, and in this way, uh, I don't like using the RSI. There are a lot of traders. To me, by the time you, the RSI is setting, uh, the RSI, you have to match the RSI with uh, the price action. Uh, if you're trading a higher time frame, like a one hour, four hours, or daily, you can use RSI. But if you're doing what I'm doing, like really tight, precise entries, uh, and really like really super focused uh, uh, trades in the morning if you're trading smaller time frames.
by the time the RSI is lining up with your price formation, the trade is long gone. The trade is long gone. You, you're missing all the trades. It's not like you're missing, you know, 50% of the trades or 75% of the trades. You're missing 100% of the trades. Oops. I thought I got rid of that. All right. So we were testing the highs right here. That's why I have my alerts. And uh, so far we have our range, we have our highs. Seems that the market wants this. Um, I think the market wants this 15 in order to clear in this entire area, in order to start pushing higher. Russell as well. Russell over 1580 is going to go to uh, 1585 and excuse me, 1590. Those are the targets for it. Twenty seven seven sixty still holding thirty sixteen still holding in the mini SMP uh, seventy nine forty still holding in NASDAQ. And 1572 still holding in um, in NASDAQ. Uh, Armand, I'm not sure I understand your question. Significance of, oh, you mean I'm using bar, bar times? You mean time frames? versus tick charts. Um, when I use bar timer in the formation of a bar price bar timer oh you heard me say it earlier so i'm using the candlesticks on different time frames um is that what you're referring maybe i express myself in a weird way. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, when you're watching price and when you're talking, you know, like uh, my brain is trained to focus on charts. And uh, if I'm answering the questions, I may come up with weird. Oh, Michael, thank you. I think he means, okay, gotcha. All righty. <laughs> okay, Whew. okay. <laughs> I was counting down how many seconds exactly because I trade momentum and I was counting down the seconds to the formation of different candles to the one minute to the two minute and the five minute so when I'm in trades I do this and I use this as a simple method of trailing to make it as effortless and as brainless as possible because uh, trading should be brainless. Execution, like no thinking. In trading, as weird as it may seem, guys, in trading, there should be no thinking. Exactly, Frank. Frank, good time. Uh, exactly. Well, Frank actually, uh, Frank actually answered your question for me. So thank you, Frank. The bar timer that tells you how much time is left to finish the bar. So basically, I look at the time on my platform and I see how many seconds into the end of the completion of the bar.
I'm sorry, Armin. I really didn't understand it. <laughs> really didn't understand the question, but um, hope you got the answer. All right, so remember that at the end of the presentation, if you guys are sending me emails, I will personally answer them. Or if you're interested in our class, my team will answer all your questions. And if you guys want to speak on one on one with me in regards to the class, um, I'm going to give you I have like three phone numbers here, but I'm going to give you my uh, my Michigan number because I'm in Michigan right now. All right, just all right, and you could call me and we could talk about we could talk about the class if you want to join the class. Um, if you have uh, you know any specific questions, you could actually talk to me right after this presentation. This uh this live trading. All right, so see what we have going on here. And even if you're sending any questions right now, my team is able to answer them for you. Absolutely, Richard, that is such a great question. If you don't think when you make a trade, do you have a set of rules and how, uh, you make the final decision. That's a great question. Well, I start with the pre-market game plan and I set my uh, key locations. These are the levels where um, there may be some really high probability trade setting up for the current session, morning, afternoon, what have you. Uh, based on this uh, set of new, um, let's say, confluence areas, Basically, they're horizontal lines like this. They're, everything is linear. Um, I take my decisions. And if it breaks down, right, if it breaks straight down to the 150, remember when we had this collapse? Was I mentioning shorts? Was I mentioning shorts? No, I was looking to see if this area is going to hold so I could take it long. So I do have a set of rules that I act uh, upon. And I do teach this in the class. Uh, Frank, do I sometimes set order in, adva in advance with appropriate targets and stops? Uh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Especially for the overnight trades. If we have a swing trade, guys, if the futures indices are going to break, if all of them are going to break above these all-time highs, we're going to be entering some really big projections for higher. No, Richard, no, no. I've been doing the same, I've been trading the same methodology for 20 years. No, I, I no. These are rules that I. Tr these are rules and strategies that I teach in my class. Been trading these strategies forever. That's why I have my track record. Uh, the dotted line are pivot points. What is a good time to trade the overnight session? I would say start with after nine thirty. You need to see a little bit of volume coming back into the market. Anytime, Richard. So yeah, no, this, this is, I did not. Listen, the thing is that I'm not coming up with strategy. These strategies that I teach, I cannot take credit for them. I wish I could, but I cannot take, I did not invent them. I have customized them so I can benefit with smaller risk, uh, smaller, smaller risk and smaller accounts. Because we don't have millions of dollars in, in, uh, in uh, our trading accounts. Uh, if I had right now like $5 million in my trading account, I would not be day trading. I would not be day trading. 
I would only be active investing and I would only go for high dividend stocks. That's it, period. Income, um, um, uh, day trading is an income producing style of trading because you go in the market and you have that, you have to have a laser focused plan and precision. Um, guys, do you know what the ratio of successful traders and day trading is compared to swing trading? Just a quick question. Who do you think makes more money, day traders or swing traders? Exactly. Swing, 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 swing. Do you guys know why? Shot? No. It's just pivot points, not floor pivots. No, Lynn, it's not emotions. No, it's not emotions. It's because when you're zooming out to a higher time frame, you're having a better definition of, uh, you're having a better definition um, of, a better definition of these key locations. And these key locations are likely to react better. And your step, uh, so your, oh, let me rephrase that again. So when you're trading higher time frames, these cluster areas, these confluence areas are more heftier than the ones that are developed on smaller time frames. And you're more likely to stay in the trade and the market can hold these particular levels from which the market can ascend or descend depending on whether you're long or short. The second thing is that there are no, there is no algorithmic trading in swing trading. All these algos go for very, very small stops. To be a successful day trader, it takes so much more knowledge than being a swing trader. If you learn how to day trade, you're gonna ace swing trading. And by the way, one thing that I wanted to mention is that everybody that is going to join this class right now that starts on Monday is going to receive the recordings from the swing trading class. So you're getting the swing trading class for free as a recording and the uh, cost of the class of the swing trading class is also $4,995. So you're getting double for the same price. Uh, Frank, great question. When you're at the computer, do you normally enter the stops and exits with limit? Yes, 100%. Very seldom times do I say in the trading room, take it here, kill it, okay? We enter limit, we exit limit. So there's nothing on impulse and say, oh my God, grab it here, grab it here. No, what did you get? What price did you get? Because you don't have, so everything has to be really well pre-planned. I have a really well, well, well pre-planned a uh, 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 pre-planned strategy that I'm going to apply every single day. Uh, Richard, which traders are more successful day or swing? Swing traders, because day traders, they don't have, they lack the patience and they lack the discipline to wait for the setups. They want to, they want to be knife catchers and they want to be top, uh, top catchers as well. No, uh, being successful, being able to stay in the game and make money consistently still swing trading. Swing trading. Day trading, you have to have the right mindset. And this is what I teach in my class. Day trading is, uh, day trading is uh, very challenging because you have to know how to trade with the algos. And we have a highly algorithmic method uh, that we teach you uh, to execute trades without emotions. Uh, William, could you repeat the free swing trading if we enroll in the in the trade trading room? No, it's not for the trading room. If you enroll in the Power Income Futures trading class, uh, you will also receive as an added bonus the recording for the swing trading class, which is valued at the same price, four thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars. No, the, no, Tom, um, the trading room is the trading room, what, what we did today, but it's uh, pretty much on a, uh, on a more um, uh, slower paced. Uh, I was answering a lot of questions. Obviously, we focus more only on making money and not a lot of explanations because 95% of the members that are in the room uh, understand the methodology and they have attended the class already. They have been with me since 2016. Since the inception. 
of the program. So only uh, only traders that enroll into uh, September 16th, and we're not gonna do this again, uh, October, November, December, we're not gonna do this at any time, any time. Uh, this is just because it's the beginning of the quarter, we want to do it now so we get everybody on the same uh, on the same pace because we day trade and swing trade and i want to make sure that you guys benefit from this last quarter of the year so i'm i'm just uh i'm just throwing in the swing trading recording which is a five day or, or a four day i believe all right and tom if you if you have any questions just shoot me an email i'll send you the full class curriculum and like I said, everybody that signs up is going to get the swing trading course. All right, price uh, price action is very sideways. So I'm gonna go ahead right now and I am going to go ahead and we're gonna talk. And by the way, I do have so many screens here, so I'm still gonna be watching. Um, okay, so I'm still gonna be watching the market. Yeah, we're waiting for entries. There's nothing coming up, Lynn, right now. It's just uh, just a bunch of nothing. All right, guys, so let me share a little bit about the Trade Out Loud Power Income Futures Trading class that we have been talking about. Oops, the dates are wrong right here. Alyssa, you didn't update this. All right, so the Futures Day Trading class is actually, uh, is actually starts on Monday, September 16th, and it ends on September 23rd, including September 23rd. So it's going to be a five-day class. It's live online. You can watch it from anywhere in the world. Remember, it starts on Monday, so it starts in four days. One, two, three, four days. Uh, it is from six o'clock to eight o'clock. Uh, this uh, session, I have also included in the same price, the swing trading class, which has a separate curriculum, which has uh, it is adapted for uh, traders that have already taken the day trading class. So it's not repetitive in patterns or anything else. Uh, and it's a very comprehensive class. It's going to teach you the ins and outs because there are more specifications when you hold trades overnight. Okay. Um, and uh, this class is followed by a 30 day trading lab. So you're going to be trading with me. Okay. What this class includes is that an intro to the futures market. What is a rollover? When do you have to, uh, when do you have to roll over? Um, how do you execute the rollover? Uh, trading hours. Uh, what are the best hours to trade in the New York session? What are the best hours to trade in the Asian session? What are the best hours to trade in the London session? And what strategies to apply? Who trades futures? And we're going to talk about algos, hedge funds, portfolio managers, uh, prop traders, individual uh, investors, individual retail traders. So we're going to talk about all those categories and what they are and who they are and how they trade. And including a big chapter on algorithmic trading. Uh, what to trade? So uh, th in this, uh, in this uh, mini chapter and what to trade, I'm going to be sharing some thoughts about what you can trade on a safer side. So that means uh, what are you, what, what is better to day trade? What is, uh, what is uh, better for swing trading, right? Uh, there, of course, there are traders that, you know, trade, uh, that day trade natural gas, that day trade gold oil, they day trade, whatever it is. Uh, and I did, I can day trade it too. However, you have to have some really clean setups and there are, if you want to narrow it down, if you want to be a really successful, remember day trading is one of the most challenging, uh, challenging styles of trading, especially when you're trading futures indices or ETFs. These are, you have to be a master at what you're doing in order to have a really good track record, uh, in doing this. Uh, also, contract specifications and more, and futures, more about futures trading. What is futures trading for contracts, et cetera, et cetera. So we talk all the details about that. 
Uh, then the next chapter, and basically the intro chapter is the recorded, and we're gonna send out the recording to you. It's about an hour, an hour or so, and you're gonna listen into this recording before you come into class on Monday. That's why the deadline to register for the class is this Friday. It's actually tomorrow at noon. That's it, period. I'm not taking anybody that is beyond 12 o'clock tomorrow into, uh, into, um, into our class. They can register for the October class, but the October class and November class or December class is never gonna come with, uh, with a swing trading class ever, ever again. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you about candlesticks, right? Candlestick language and patterns. We're gonna talk about patterns. We're gonna talk pattern formations. We're gonna talk all the nitty gritty about how, how I count these candles and what, what it takes to have to issue continuation, what it means to issue uh, rotation and all that fun stuff. So a lot here into charting. Then uh, we go into tools and indicators. Uh, these are just the tools and indicators that I use. You can see that I don't use any sophisticated indicators other than a few moving averages and that's it. Uh, market stages, market stages are uh, very important in, in the cycle of the market because you know, uh, market stages are actually the ones that are keeping you on the right side of the trade. Uh, and uh, keeping you on the right side of the trade, meaning if you're having a market environment, you know, like this, like we're having right now, wishy-washy is just basing at the high, are you gonna short the high? Not likely, because if you short the high, you may have like really small targets of about, I don't know, 1.2 points or so. Uh, the other thing is that we teach you market trends. So obviously, you know, the market can move in only three directions. There's no surprise. The markets go up, down, or they remain sideways. But which strategies to apply in these kind of market environments? Then we're going to be teaching you day trading time frames, which, tra which time frames to trade and when to switch around, because we sometimes do a lot of switcheroos around. And this is going to provide you with the confidence that you're looking at the right time frame at the right time. All right. The other thing is uh, analytical time frames. Analytical time frames is that okay? So good. I'm executing my trade on the one minute or even on the tick chart because I teach you what tick chart, what a tick chart is, uh, how you can trade a tick chart because every trader is different, you know. And it, it doesn't mean that if I don't trade a tick chart, you should not be taking trading a tick chart because everybody's different. And once you learn how to trade the right way, you can use any time frame on this planet. So besides these day trading time frames where you execute the trades, these are executional time frames, day trading time frames. And a lot of traders don't know that before you actually get to trade. Uh, the one minute or the two minute, there's some deep analysis involved. And we're talking about analytical timeframes that you need to use in order to take your day trading decisions. So as you can see, we're just layering, layering, layering pieces of information that they're finally going to get you where? To the advanced technical analysis. And we teach you technical analysis. We basically teach you in each and every single, uh, 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 each and every single uh, 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 major uh, um, determining um, methodology that you need to apply in technical analysis. So first off, we, uh, first off, you know, we're going to teach you uh, support resistance zones, but in this technical analysis chapter, we're going to teach you, guess what? Eight support resistance levels, eight. And amongst these, there are the, uh, the most important one uh, is uh, is actually the one that will determine whether you're really sitting into a congestion area that is prone to what? Prone to institutional buying or selling. And these are four price points, okay? The other thing is market tempo. You heard me saying, hey, it's 10 o'clock reversal time. It's 10.30 trigger time, prime time, trigger time. Uh, you hear me saying, hey, it's 11.30, uh, the close of the London session. These all carry different, uh, this, these three, these, uh, just these three timeframes alone carry uh, specific, um, uh, uh, specifics about the market. Whether, and by the way, whether you're trading stocks, this applies 100% to trading stocks. So if you're learning how to trade, they trade futures, you, you I mean, Let's face it, guys, stocks are not as fleecy as futures indices. You don't make a lot of money in them. That's why I navigated towards this futures market. But if you're going to take all the knowledge from this course and apply it to stocks, oh my gosh, 
you're going to be like, boom, unleashed. Okay. You're going to make so much money day trading stocks. So if you have an account where you can day trade stocks, you're going to make a killing because stock trading is going to seem like a walk in the park compared to futures trading. Uh, so we teach you the market tempo because there are certain times throughout the day when the market is oscillating and whether it has a linear oscillation, where it's, whether it has, a, uh, it's that has an ascending oscillation or descending oscillation. Then we teach you trigger times. Remember, I mentioned the 1030 prime time trigger time. But the other thing, uh, the other thing that uh, the other thing that I that I love about uh, a dormant market is that sometimes dormant market, meaning a slower market environment, is that you can have triggers as uh, soon as 9:35 or 9:32 or 9:35 a.m. So I love that about this, uh, about this, uh, about this. So you can trade even in, in the quiet period. Uh, then we're going to talk about the anatomy of the trade. So where you are going to learn exactly how to determine the precise entries, how to determine the precise, uh, precise stocks, how to determine uh, the targets and how to calculate the targets and what to look for when you're calculating targets. Uh, and then we teach you day trading, uh, day, uh, day trading, I don't know, like day trading, trading strategies, day trading, well, day trading tr strategies, whatever. Okay, so, <laughs> so it's day trading strategies. And we teach you a plethora of day trading strategies. By the way, the Dow is violating that 60 support zone. So you see that it peaked above 3,000. It just got some traders uh, back into the game and now it's retracting. Okay, so we teach you day trading strategies, a plethora of day trading strategies that you can apply. Uh, the other thing is that we teach you trailing methods, the trading methods that you're going to be applying. Uh, so trading becomes a no brainer. Okay, so trading becomes a no brainer because the most success, why do you think algorithms have such a high success, uh, success rating? It's because they take every trade that fits their plan and they don't think. Okay, so they, they get their trigger, they put their stops, they hit their targets, they're out. Uh, or they initiate the trade, they put the stops, they stop out, they don't whine. And if they get another signal, they go back into the game. No emotion. And pretty much these are the day trading strategies and the trailing methods that you need to apply in order to make trading as brainless as possible. Uh, also, we have money management, and uh, money management is going to teach you all about uh, all about how you can uh, position size for the trade, uh, how you can apply, uh, you know, all um, uh, how you can apply position sizing for different size accounts, how you can trade uh, based on your risk tolerance or your risk level. Then we have risk management, and here we talk about. Uh, uh, we talk about the, the risk and the reward and what you need to look for when you, before you actually get into a trade. The other thing that we also teach is trading psychology. I've been trying to detach the trading psychology a bit from the course and try to provide a, a, a recording for it. But I thought, yeah, you know what? No, I'm still going to teach it live because I think it's better that way. And we're going to leave the best for last, putting everything together. I thought it's best to dedicate one extra day. So the classes from now on are not going to be those five days, but are going to be like six days. Because I want this putting everything together implementation class. I wanted to do it live with you guys. All right. So this, what is included with this class? The class has, uh, has uh, actually six two-hour modules. Uh, we often go beyond the two hours, so don't schedule, uh, don't schedule, uh, you know, to be in the class only two hours. Sometimes we do get a lot of questions and sometimes we look at a lot of charts and we may extend the two hours to two and a half hours or even more sometimes. Uh, you are going to receive all the on-demand recordings and also the on-demand recordings for our, from our prior classes. So not only from the current class, but from the prior classes. Uh, you're going to have access to unlimited live retake. So every time we host a class, you're going to come in. Remember, trading is repetition. And the most successful traders that I have in my trading room are the traders that have taken the class 8, 10 times, 20 times down the line. I'm not kidding you guys. I have traders. The more you come into the class, the more you're going to get a refresher, the better you're going to be trading the next, uh, the next month. 
I guarantee this 100%. I still have traders from three years ago that are coming into the class and they're, they're successfully trading. And, and trust me, even for me, it's fantastic to refresh the material from time to time because it keeps me, on, it keeps me in shape, you know? Okay, so uh, you are going to have an electronic manual. Uh, you're also going to be getting a professional platform layout, and it really doesn't matter whether you're trading off the Thinkorswim platform uh, or you're trading another platform. I'm going to share with you exactly how my platform is set up, and you can adjust it accordingly if you like the way I have it set up. You can ask any questions and interact with me. Also, you have full access to me, almost 24-7. Not really 24-7, but uh, you have access to me every, every day until probably 10 p.m. at night, every, every, every day. Whether it's Saturday or Sunday, I'm gonna get back to you guys that are gonna have, you're all, we're also gonna have a private feed where you, can, uh, where you can reach me at, like I said, 24-7. So uh, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. All right. Uh, so you can interact with me at every single time. You're also going to get some risk charts and so much more. So this is how it works. First step is come to the class. And you, I teach you everything that I, that I know right now. It, actually, the trading room is an extension of the class, and it provides the training wheels for further uh, for, uh, uh, for further. Um, uh, education because you need to you need to repeat rinse and repeat rinse and repeat every single day so you step one is come and learn in the online class step two is learn and trade so this is basically in the trading room right so you're gonna learn and trade and you're gonna learn and trade uh, using microbes 30 or 60 days I don't want you guys to use a simulated account not unless you really think that you need that simulated account you may use a simulated account for about 10 days or so but i don't want you in a simulated account because you're going to get bad habits and you don't have any skin in the game uh step number three learn trade and start earning so implement refine and trade with a group of like-minded traders and obviously in the trading room bottom line this is what we teach we teach you the most powerful day trading chart patterns and how to exploit them for above average gains. The six disciplines, which is the ESTR, which is the, the entry to stop the target and the risk, plus position sizing and trailing, plus so much more. How to maximize your timing using uh, simple and powerful indicators. How to maximize gains and minimize losses using proper, ma uh, proper money management techniques. Uh, uh, market timing, precise location, prone to institutional buying and selling, because you wanna be on the institutional side. You want to be on the institutional side. You don't want to go against institutions. Counter trend trading right now is going against institutions. Uh, you're going to apply advanced technical analysis, and so you're going to learn tech, advanced technical uh, analysis and so much more. You're never going to need another technical analysis ever, uh, uh, manual ever, ever, ever again. You won't need one. I'm going to teach you everything: how to calculate targets beyond all-time highs. So what happens now? Because Let's say YM, s and NASDAQ, they're really trading into that thin, that frothy layer of resistance. Uh, and we're actually trading into those peaks. Do we have any other targets beyond that? What are we going to go by, right? So what if we trade above the all-time highs? Where is the price going to go to? Uh, I'm not going to take a trade unless I know exactly where my price is going to go to. And this is uh, the institutional approach. Institutions need to know where the price target is. And we have tools and technical analysis that will, that will teach you how to do that. So the Power Income Day Trading Futures class is Monday through Friday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, starting, it starts on Monday on September 16th. The class tuition is $4,995 and it has installments. So if you want to sign up, my team is ready, so um, info at tradeoutloud.com. We're going to send you the full class curriculum. If, and again, if you still have any questions, you can ask them here in the room, or like I said, I gave you my phone number. Uh, you can reach out and uh, say, hey, you know what? I want to discuss about this, or I want to discuss about that. Uh, so feel free to ask any kind of questions. More than happy to provide answers to all of your um uh, all of your uh, concerns, all of your questions, etc. If if you have any, um, let's see here. And the swing trading class is going to teach you. Uh, obviously, there are uh, there are different strategies uh, that we apply for swing. 
I mean, there are some strategies that we apply in swing trading that we don't apply in day trading. So um, uh, we're going to teach you exactly that in the swing trading class. Uh, we're also going to teach you the execution time frame and the analytical time frame, which are totally different than the day trading. So there are some things that, that differ uh, from the day trading class. And this is why we have the swing trading class as well for futures. And again, uh, uh, if you want to sign up, uh, the deadline is tomorrow at noon. I'm not taking any kind of, of um, you know, not taking any student beyond 12 o'clock that signs up after 12 o'clock. Okay, so uh, there's a lot, you know, um, we need to uh, get everything ready and out by Friday at four o'clock. And from 12 to four o'clock, you know, there's just very little time, uh, very little time to do that. And then we wrap up the week here. Okay. Uh, no, April, the trading room goes on because the, the classes, uh, the classes are uh, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. And the trading room operates from 9, 9 o'clock to 4 p.m. Eastern every day. Uh, Mike, the classes will be recorded and you can review them every single time. And by the way, you will be able to download the class. You don't even need to be on, uh, you don't even need to have an internet connection to view the classes. You can download them on your computer and review them anytime you want. Uh, Lou, yes, the 30-day trading lab is basically the training room access, and we're going to have the one-day implementation where we discuss exactly how you put everything together that you have learned in the five days. Mm -hmm. All right, so as you can see, guys, the, the price action is uh, relatively muted right now, so not a lot going on. Not a lot going on. It's just back and forth reaction. We may still be hovering into these areas until tomorrow. Uh, canceled the oil. Remember, uh, right before coming from the lunch break, I was reviewing some charts. So cancel for now. Cancel the oil trade. Trade. I can't tell you how hard it is to type only with one one finger, and sometimes that uh, my my hand slips on enter, and I just release, and I can't delete. <laughs> I can't delete the message that I'm sending. So sorry about that. You guys have to live with that for I don't know how much time, <laughs> probably for another month or so. <laughs> All right, banks are ferocious. Banks are ferocious. Verizon unleashed. Today, the reality is that today, um, it's more of a digestion day into the frothy, frothy highs. I doubt that we're gonna have any trades into the end of the day. But I'm not, I'm not going to say that I'm not going to have a trade until, until I actually see some formations here. But very kind of range-bound price action, pretty wide range for my liking. Right now, we're expanding to about 60-point risk in the Dow. Uh, we're expanding to more than six points in the S&P. We're, we're just about into the, uh, uh, I would say, almost – almost 20 points into NASDAQ, 20 plus points into NASDAQ.
All right, let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, Tony, no, you do not have to take the class in order to attend the trading room. You can sign up for the trading room is tradeoutloud.com and you could actually uh, you could actually sign up right away. This is the trading room right here. This is the page trading room and you scroll down and you can sign up for the room. It's right here, trading room at the second tab. You click on it, you register, you're good to go. <laughs> Herb. <laughs> I see you have been talking to someone. Uh-huh. <laughs> awesome. All right, uh, not much here to, to chat about. Just let me know. Yeah, it looks exactly, Herb. Looks like we're definitely all done here. Remember the contract switcheroo, guys. Remember, that's why we're, let me ch just check the volume. <sighs> Yeah, volume is increasing. Uh, a lot of traders rolled already into the Z's. That is the December. Twenty thousand uh, in the Dow. Let's check out uh, for December. Let's check out the M and S M P. <clears throat> uh yeah these m and &E is more active for almost 450,000 of in volume from the 1.5 million so var volume is really uh dripping fast into the new contract that's why guys we're not going to be executing any new trades until the end of the set uh, trading session today i'm gonna stay on the mic a little bit in case you guys uh no richard i would not short no i would not short why i'm here it may want to pull back a little bit, but as long as I have, as long as I have a really strong Russell, let me put all of them on the, on the same time frame. Okay. So look at the divergence, the Russell super strong, and they're, they're going to try to hold. I mean, you have to go on the path of least resistance, Richard, and the path of least resistance is still to the upside. The downside is a, a huge amount of pain in all the indices. Only news can drip it lower. If we're getting some bad news right now, that's what's going to break some of these painful um, support zones. The only thing that can make the price go lower right now is that is uh, is typically um, exiting some contracts, Richard, because of the roll. But that's pretty much it. Very stable, uh, very stable so far. So like I said before, you know, the volume is really dripping and there's, uh, you know, it's very, very tight. For instance, uh, for instance, the December contract and the S&P is trading at 3019 already. Uh, this current contract uh, uh, is trading at 3017. So very small difference. So we're not going to get any kind of crazy gaps in it. And let me check in YM. Yeah, and YM is dripping even more right now. 
over 20,000. So they're, they're really going into this December. They're really going into this December. I really wouldn't want to do it. Now, remember, you can still trade this contract. Uh, you could still trade this contract tomorrow and you have actually eight days to trade this contract, but it's not going to carry a lot of volume. So on Monday, you are going to see if you still want to trade the U. Uh, so the September contract, it's going to be uh, very thin, very, very thin. So it's not going to... Uh, in eight days is not going to expire worthless, but um, and um, uh, the uh, you can see that uh, right now the Dow is trading at 250, 252. And the four contract, uh, the December contract is trading at 235. Almost 1030 ramp time. Yeah, this is the only thing that may um, may cause the price to drop uh, existing uh, exi existing role. Uh, Two forty is still support into the Dow. See what it's doing. So it hit the 40 and it's bouncing back up. It's not letting it bleed. Can I elaborate on natural gas? Natural gas has been a in a consolidation pattern from 250 to 265. If it breaks over 265, it's going to go higher, 270, 280 next resistance. And if it's going to break below 250, it's probably going to go to 240 and 235. Oh, NASDAQ, <laughs> I thought natural gas. Okay, NASDAQ, NASDAQ needs to break above, uh, uh, above 79.60 in order to break out higher. Uh, and uh, the stop is gonna be wide. It's gonna be about 40 points into the 49.40. And the target is gonna be 79.70 to 79.80. I don't see anything developing yet. Anytime, Wayne. Okay, I'll I'll type it into you. It may take some time <laughs> with one hand. Okay, let me know, guys. Keep on coming. Questions. Questions. uh richard do you look to enter swing trades during the day and if so when whenever they uh whenever they uh really uh you know set up it could be any time of the day and if they're so i'm looking for patterns 
Um, and if the pattern is setting up in the New York trading session, then I take it. If it's not setting up in the New York trading session, then I set alerts and I revisit it at night. I check parameters and I set alerts for my parameters. You know, the way we kind of set alerts, let's say for oil today or for Russell or for YM or uh, NASDAQ or whatever we were trading today. I, I do the same for the overnight trading. So when I get the alert on my phone, wherever I am, you know, whether I'm shopping or in the movies or wherever, uh, you know, I check the, uh, I check my, um, uh, I check my alert and I usually place my alerts uh, a little bit below the trigger price and uh, I take the trade. So uh, sometimes they trigger, I don't know, uh, but I can only keep a tap. So if they're forming, let's say into 10 o'clock or so, and if I see that there's a setup development there, I can put my limit order uh, and I can put my stop and I can put my, my take profit target and then I let it run through the night. Uh, but if the parameters are not met until 10 o'clock, then I go to bed. So I look at it the next day. I'm not losing sleep over it. Uh, Pablo, uh, some people tell it's a good strategy to fade the last eight minutes. Really? Because they just got slaughtered yesterday. They usually get slaughtered every single day because that's the ramp time. And the last five minutes has been astonishing to the upside every single time. I think that's a really bad idea to do that. That's not a strategy. That's a Hail Mary. And that's, uh, that's not a strategy. Uh, Ta. Uh, why, uh, why ES, if it goes to a certain level, uh, then, uh, if it goes higher, because it's entering the path of the least resistance, that's it's, it's always like that. It goes in the path of least resistance and you know how to read. It's not rocket science guys. It's super simple. If you eliminate emotions and if you eliminate all the mumbo jumbo that, you know, you have out there on the internet, trading is actually really simple and it comes to strategies and it comes to patterns. It's back to the basics. The number of trades I make with a small account is not limited with micro futures. No. Serena, no. There's actually very slow momentum today, which is which is kind of typical. I mean, I'm not a big fan of trading the afternoon, but sometimes there are opportunities, sometimes they're not. You have to know when to be aggressive. Like when you're seeing no momentum and the volume is dead, you're not gonna take a trade. Serena, you love the way I think out loud. That is how I learn. And yes, that's how you learn. Listen, uh, that's a good point, Serena. I wish you could type it here in the room. Do you mind if I share it with the room? Do you mind if I share it? Oh, okay. Well, you have to select panelists and attendees, Serena. Okay, select panelists and attendees. Guys, when you look at charts, <laughs> uh, the one thing that my mentor um, taught me is that, listen, when you're doing market analysis, do it out loud. Because when you start talking out loud and you hear yourself, where you would want to enter, where you would want to stop, it makes more sense. Because by talking, 
you're not enabling the brain to act and at uh, uh, on an impulse. Okay, you're taking the time, so you're stepping back and doing performing an analysis. If you would do this on every single trade, and if you walk yourself out loud through every single trade, you would not take all the mumbo jumbo trades, and you would really be selective because you're gonna talk. You're literally gonna talk yourself out of some trades, and that's gonna be a good thing. So you really need to have what discipline and patience to wait for the pattern. Do you see me like? going full throttle here in one direction or another no because there's nothing going on there's no momentum do you think that we're going to get momentum later i don't know we're going to wait and see but the probability of having the highest trades into the close are very slim probably five percent maybe less maybe one percent Yeah, I do. Yes, of course. And I do it in the Serena. I, I'm always, uh, I'm always uh, talking my uh, uh, talking about the trace that I want to take the trace that I take and the analysis after so my thought process is always out loud in the trading room, hence the name trade out loud. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Mark. Um, I think we could go back down and why I'm back to 220. I wouldn't do it, but if you want to short it, you can short it into the 38, 40 area. Let's say even here, you have to have a stop of 71. Look for 220 and 200. And uh, the m and &E S&P to 12, you, you, could, you could take it back to 12, but you're getting such a weird uh, divergence with Russell because Russell is up and the rest is down.
Yeah, very muted price action. I agree, uh, Jeff. <clears throat> Not necessarily, Lynn. not much velocity uh dale we did good uh yeah it, it's nothing happening like i said we have the contract roll into tomorrow and i don't expect any kind of follow through on either side of, uh, either side of the tape surely i don't think i look at levels and if in tomorrow's trading sessions you know it depends on uh, how the overnight trading session is doing uh, so if we don't violate today's lows, as long as the overnight trading session is going to stay above today's lows, um, at least 50% above the lows, we're going to head higher. That's my bias. Stan, I don't, but I do use the tick. And when we're having volatility, I don't use it every day. Dan, I don't use it every day, just when we have volatility in the market. See, not my, I'm telling you the short side of the tape is, uh, is muted today, as long as you're having a relative strength Russell. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I think we're gonna wrap up sooner here. Just going through some charts, not taking any swing trades, I'm just managing. My financials are just on a tear today my portfolio is like the the swing portfolio is deep green deep 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 green uh for next week we're not going to be issuing any uh any swings uh as we're heading into a very turbulent uh fomc meeting A bit of a drip lower here. The SMP is still struggling with this 14, 14, 15, still strong support zone.
I'm sending you the info. Mm, yeah, it crossed that it cro because it crossed the 20. No, I, th these trades are not for me. This, these are just dripping trades. Okay, questions. Uh, Lou, can you reiterate what you said about how you use day trading account versus your swing trading account, income versus wealth production, uh, and uh, thinking behind that? Of course, Lou, here's the thing. The, when you have a little bit more money, you want to divide it into two or three little piles, right? You want to have your day trading account where you have money that is working for you on a day-to-day -day basis. And then you want swing trading account, a swing trading account where you were hold position somewhere between two days and about two weeks. We're depending on the market environment. If you have a sideways environment like we had in August throughout the whole duration of August, you would be holding even now. So we have been in trades for about two, two months right now. And these are active swing trades where you probably expect to be in from two days to two weeks, and we're still in, we're still in financials. Uh, we're still in Verizon. We're still in Merck, we're still in XBI, we're still in Micron. I mean, we're making like giant Orson's profits. We're still just very little, uh, just very little, uh, um, uh, a very little left in Boeing as well. But we made a killing with everybody else that was trading futures to stop out stopped out of their account. Some, some individual traders have liquidated their accounts for the, uh, in, uh, in April because they all stopped out of all their trades. We thrived, okay? We thrived. And I promise you guys, I'm gonna have a swing trading, uh, a swing, stock swing trading uh, webinar sometime soon. I don't know when. Um, my time is so limited and I'm already like overcrowded. I already don't have time for anything else. But anyways, uh, so, uh, Lou, it's great if you have a little bit of money to have one for day trading because it's going to work for you every single time. One for swing trading. The reason behind that is, for instance, we took that on Monday, we took a swing trading in YM, right? And we used, I used, I mean, there are members in the room that are day trading and swinging around in the same account, which is fine. You can do that. I like to keep them separate because when I'm day trading, I can micromanage and kill my swing trade because I'm watching every single tick or every single minute of the bar, okay? And that's the reason for that. The other thing is that uh, when you wanna have your longer term money work for you, you wanna have an investing account. You could do it both in a swing trading account so you can have a swing slash active investing account. I have three separates. So it's fine because the day trading account is you're taking trades just, you know, in and out, in and out every single day. And in my day trading account, I use my day trading account to pay all my bills, right? I use my day trading account to pay all my bills. At the end of the month, I take out the excess, right? Out the excess. And I leave. So let's say if you have, I don't know, $100,000 account or $20,000 account, let's say $20,000, right? If you have a $20,000 account and if you make twenty two thousand dollars okay you have two thousand dollars that month i take away that two thousand and i pay my bills with does that make sense and then in a swing trading account i reinvest it all the time i reinvest it so why what i make i reinvest in the market so my profits my profits from swing trading micron 
uh, from swing trading. Boy, guys, if you would have taken uh, only a hundred shares of Boeing, you would have made fifteen hundred dollars with us in twenty four hours, only with a hundred shares in Boeing. If you would have taken the Verizon, if you would take in, I don't know, natural gas, we closed last, last actually we closed it this month, we closed uh, a natural gas trade. So we had a swing in natural gas. These trades are not setting up every day. So you cannot take, I waited for natural gas about seven months or eight months. I forget how much I waited. I waited until it got into that two, $2 and I just, you know, um, until it's set up. So Lou, does that answer your question? Uh, of course I have them. Um, uh, okay, so very helpful. Thank you. Any thoughts on doing any of this in retirement account like an IRA? Of course, of course. We always have trading trading ideas for, uh, for, uh, uh, for IRA accounts, for long-term money. So you don't mac micromanage them to death. You can use a swing trading and you can use that long-term account for, uh, for swing trades and for, um, uh, and for active investing. So you don't need to have two accounts if you don't want to, and you can pull, uh, pull the money, which would work even better, I think. Besides futures, do you take swing trades on stocks and uh, on, yes, on stocks and ETF live in the trading room? Yes, Lynn, I do. We don't do, we don't spit out a lot of trades, but when we do, we work the heck out of them. All right. So this month I only took one little trade and we're in a plethora of trades. Okay. We're in a plethora of trades. These are just some of them. Let me show you. Okay. These are just some of them that we're in. These are just some of them that we're in. My traders that are here in the trading room, I don't know, they're very quiet today, but my traders that are here in the trading room can confirm that these are the trades that we're in and then we're still in many more. We're still in many, many more. Uh, MU is one of our huge, uh, biggest, and by the way, here, I should replace this with, I, I still had it. Like I said, I still have a little piece of Boeing. I should replace it here. Um, so, um, like I said, we had this breakout right here. We took it long at 366. We, we, we actually took some profits around this area. We're still in with a little lot and Lou, we're in it for long term because, we don't have, a, and I'm not going to dedicate this session to swing trading, but we're looking for a target into uh, 400 and even more than that. Bank of America, we, uh, we, again, we made a killing in it. We, we stayed, we, so we stayed through this drop. We stayed through this drop where everybody was stopping out, stopping out, stopping out, stopping out, all the options traders. Boom, 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 boom. Fire. Stop out, stop out, stop out, stop out, stop out expire worthless. We thrived. We thrived. I don't do a lot of options trading, but I'm really good at stock trading. Uh, do you enter a stop as uh, soon as you enter each trade? Richard, for day trading, yes. For swing trading, no. It depends on the market condition. If you put in a hard stop in stocks, might as well kiss your trading account goodbye from now or go on a really big nice vacation in Bora Bora get it over with um I mean I'm serious <laughs> I hope you didn't take that the wrong way but I'm like really serious and in the futures market uh, as well uh my um uh, my take on the, on the swing trading market, Richard, is that you need to have a stop, but you need to put that hard stop as an emergency stop way below. You do not want the algos to know that. By the way, if you research on the internet, just type this. Do brokers sell your trading, your trading information where you have entry stop, blah, blah, blah. Just Google it. The answer is yes, they do. 
And there are algorithms that know exactly, they sell this information to algo people and they base their strategies on where you have your stock. And they know, they teach, listen, trading is not hard and basically everybody's gonna teach you pretty much the same concept. This is your entry, this is the stop, this is the target. So they're gonna tell you, this is your entry, this is the stop, this is where you need to put a stop to limit your risk, okay? But if you put it as hard in your platform, some, so it, when you're swing trading, especially, and even when you're day trading, I typically sometimes don't even have it in because I don't want them to see where I have my stop. I don't want them. I want to be as invisible as possible. All right, Shaw, uh, 45 minutes ago, YM and NASDAQ. I don't know what that is. So anyway, this is, uh, this is all stuff that we talk in the trading room and I, I actually teach in class, so do it. All right, uh, any other questions, guys? We're pretty much wrapped up. So remember, the deadline to sign up for the class is tomorrow at noon um and uh i'm very happy to work with you guys if you want to join the trading room that's fine visit our website thank you frank i try to be as honest as possible <laughs> even if that's kind of um hard sometimes so thank you so much guys for attending hope you all have a great afternoon it's been a pleasure to spend uh to spend three days with you guys i love it what you i love interacting with traders so thanks so much guys for attending. Uh, I look forward to working with you. The, tonight's recording, uh, uh, tonight's recording, today's recording will be uh, sent out later today. Thanks so much for participation, guys. Have a great uh, session tomorrow and have a great next week. Good luck.